audiences. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The FBI has successfully executed a raid on the Visa Corporation, exposing what could be the largest credit card scam in U.S. history. According to authorities, the Visa Syndicate for years fooled millions of Americans by issuing convincing-looking credit cards carefully designed to dupe consumers into spending far more money than they had. Investigators believe the fraudulent corporation also lured victims in with enticing rewards programs and free gifts, thereby trapping them in a spiral of debt they could never hope to repay. According to the results of a groundbreaking new study, 96% of humans would rather be a singing, dancing, animatronic bear. The study finds that a great majority of people on the planet would prefer to trade in their regular lives for one in which they sat on a plastic log, strummed a banjo, and sang songs on a stage with all their goofy bear friends. Respondents also stated that not being a sentient human being with feelings of doubt, sadness, and pain contributed to the decision. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Take control here, toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Allie. Allie is here, courtesy of her radio show. That's ALP, and we can talk about that and what it is here in a little bit. Of course, we'll talk to you about whatever's on your mind at 855-450 free. Still to come here tonight, Allie, uh, what did you what did you bring to the table this evening? Well, this is a story I was going to talk about last week, but we did not quite get to it. So, I'm excited to bring it back this week. Um, the e-cigarette critics. Oh. They're worried that some of the new ads that uh, one of the particular companies, Blue e-cig has been putting out in magazines that they are catered for children. Well, let's talk about that right now, then, since we didn't get to it previously. We've been discussing the e-cigarettes throughout the uh, th- throughout their existence, basically. I mean, as soon as we found out about it here on Free Talk Live, we've well, also was... advertised e-cigs here on the show before. Yeah, and uh, and I've used a few, you know, different e-cigarettes, and I'm, I'm not a cigarette smoker, um, but I, I like the e-cigarette. I find the e-cigarette to be uh, fun and tasty. They've really and... grown in popularity popularity uh it's, you know this because you actually worked at a convenience store and yep. were selling them yep that's true i used to sell e-cigarettes and i also just know a ton of people who use them mm-hmm. and some people like to use them recreationally there are times when people who are addicted to nicotine can't get their cigarette can't get the nicotine when they're inside or perhaps just in a place where they ban cigarette smoking which is pretty much everywhere everywhere um, so some people are using them in those situations, but some people are using them to actually stop smoking. So, Which is awesome. For a lot of people, it has this really positive force in their life that helps them accomplish you know, a goal that I think most people can get behind, which is uh, taking control of your health and quitting bad habits. So uh, tell me about this story that you have. So this story is from NPR um, by Debbie Elliott, and it goes this way. Electronic cigarette makers are getting bold with their advertising using... Pre- provocative new print ads and celebrity endorsements on TV. Hmm. Both public health advocates say these images are luring kids to hook them on nicotine. Well, now, I could be wrong about this, but didn't the federal government ban cigarette advertising? Yeah, I believe that you're... See, Except for maybe magazines. There's like an exception, but like yeah, you can Yeah, because I have seen... seen um, American Spirit ads in magazines before. I know I've seen... I've seen Camel ads, too. But I'm pretty sure... Like ads on the radio and television for cigarettes just are not those. allowed. Yeah. So that's interesting that you know you can advertise e-cigarettes apparently, but not cigarettes. Right. So I guess you know this story is more about a specific magazine ad, which I hadn't even thought of how cigarette companies advertise in magazines. So I don't know what's so bold about that. Um, but I hadn't seen the television ads or the celebrity endorsements on television. I guess I just don't watch a lot of TV. But uh, maybe they don't. I guess some rules don't apply to the e-cigarettes because it's not technically tobacco. You know, when they started making these regulations, yeah, maybe they no, didn't. it must be because according to the Wikipedia article on what is was called the Public Health Cigarette Smoking Act, passed federally in 1970, 
it was all along with requiring stronger health warnings on cigarette packages it also banned cigarette advertisements on american radio and television so interesting so but much cigar, for freedom of speech what about like cigars or pipe smoking ah uh, that's a good good question it doesn't say specifically here in this summary but do you ever see that either? I mean, I don't watch I don't TV. See that. Yeah. I don't really watch TV, but when I did watch TV, I don't recall seeing those things. Toba- uh, tobacco ads. Definitely not like um, cigarette ads. And I guess I didn't see the other ones either, but that's interesting. And I think people just really don't know wh- how to think of the e cig because there's a lot of ignorance about it. And it looks a lot like smoking a cigarette. Some of them look a lot like cigarettes just in their design yeah, they and got the, the size. little red uh, cherry on the end of it. And right. They, they, you know, white stick although some of the newer ones that seem to be more popular now don't so much look like cigarettes uh like the larger this kind of these mammoth uh i don't right. know what you call them they look but, like big machines like yeah, little they, controllers they've got juice obviously like in the front and you see people refilling them so those they look like so. portable vaporizers which is exactly what they are well, right yeah e-cigarette is just kind of shorthand for vaporizer right so you're vaporizing. For those who don't know what we're talking about, you the, the e-cigarette is a vaporizer. It has a solution that I think is usually is it propylene glycol based in some cases. Yes. Uh, that you know has flavoring, some added kind of to glycerin, it. and then the nicotine. Yes, and and different levels of nicotine. So as you mentioned, some people use the e-cigarette to uh, cut down the nicotine that they use and even cut it out. So you can get uh, the the liquid that has you know a lot, like a high concentration of nicotine, all the way down to in some cases zero concentration of nicotine. So there are some people who have managed to work their way down to zero, and actually you know they can quit anytime they want at that point because then it's just the habit. Of right. uh, using something kind of the hand to mouth motion habit at that point, and it's pretty it's pretty cool to see these growing in popularity. But it's also interesting to see people's reactions to them because a lot of places want to treat them like cigarettes. Like I saw an ad on the courtroom, uh, not an ad, a notice a on There's a ban uh, for a ban on the e cig, and it was said something to the effect of. There will be no tobacco products used inside this building, including the e-cigarette. And I was right, thinking, that's not, not a tobacco, tobacco product. product in any way. In fact, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because when we get through this story that you have about the advertising, there is news about Los Angeles going ahead and banning the use of the e-cigarettes in the same wow. places as uh, regular cigarettes. Now, Allie, you are a regular cigarette smoker. Yes. Uh, are you not? Like there's some people who, when you ask them about this, they'll say that oh, it's not as good as a cigarette. That the, the e-cigarette doesn't have the same throat hit as uh, as a, it's a term that I've heard used. Yeah. Is there something about the e-cigarette that is not attractive to you, and why are well, you not using the e-cigarette? The e-cigarette is attractive to me, and I've used I've used them before, but more recreationally and not not really to quit. But I could see how it could be really helpful in quitting. Like it could well, that's what I meant recreationally. I mean, yeah. you know, if, if I were a smoker, it would seem to be a, a no-brainer to me. Like, hmm, tasty, you know, <laughs> e-cigarette. Well, the thing for me is like cigarettes. the thing for me is when I'm using the e-cig, I could smoke the same rate. Like some people use e-cig and they think, oh, I don't even have to go out for a cigarette, but mm-hmm. it's not making me want to smoke less. But if I was, you know, deciding to quit smoking and I went for a long time without a cigarette and I thought, I just need to, I like, I'm going to smoke now, then I would rather smoke an e-cig okay. or vaporize an e-cig than smoke a cigarette if I had the option. Hmm. All right. So but if I'm not making any attempt to quit, then I'm, I'd rather just have a cigarette. Why? Is it is it more satisfying? Is the cigarette more satisfying? I don't satisfying? really know. It, it is more satisfying, I guess. I like that it's... You know, you start with something fresh and then you finish and it's and gone. It's gone. Hmm. I don't like this so thing you keep picking up. There's a completion yes. aspect to yes. it. Yes. That's interesting. I like I to never burn heard through a before. full one. 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number. You're welcome to share your experience with the e-cigarette. But let's get to the more of the story. I guess more of the meat of the story here about this uh, concern right. that the critics have about uh, advertising e-cigarettes. Back to NPR. The latest ad for blue e-cigs, for example, which ran in the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit edi- Edition, features <laughs> an itsy-bitsy bikini bottom emblazoned with a company name and includes the tagline, Slim, Charged, Ready to Go. You didn't see the model's face. The frame is from uh, from pierced belly button to mid-thigh. It left Stam Glantz, a professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, struggling for a de- delicate way to describe it. He says, the advertising just 
just hit a new high in terms of chutzpah, says Glantz, director of the Center for Tobacco Control Research and Education. Using sex to sell cigarettes, um, cigarettes is nothing new, he says, and e-cigarettes are, pushed, um, are pushing the envelope because they're unregulated. He says if the Obama administration were serious about protecting the public on public health, they would immediately move to clamp down Bandits. on the way e-cigarettes are being advertised and apply mm. the same rules that apply to cigarette advertising, Glantz says. You would think if this person understood anything about tobacco and tobacco control, as his title suggests, that he would support, you know, letting everyone know about the e-cig if it's helping people quit. Well, that's just it. The uh, the claim by the critics is that e-cigarettes will lead people to smoke. I just think that that that's crazy. Belief. Most people I know who have any interest in the e-cig are using it because they already are addicted to nicotine. We'll come back. And that's my experience, too. But we'll come back with more and dig in further here. I uh, want to get your thoughts. Certainly, they're welcome on whatever's on your mind as well. You can also bring up whatever you want here at Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well. Yes, now there is, and it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to may be even more nervous than you are. And the way things are now, your references have never been more important. Here are three tips. First, know that employers are checking. Every hire is under the microscope these days. Second, they won't just be checking references you provide. Figure that all of your ex-employers will get a call and be asked, would you hire him or her again? Again. Third, assume you will be Googled. So before you apply, remove all those party animal photos from your Facebook page. Even if you're not in the job market, effective communication skills have never been more important, with money and attention so scarce now. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day to day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. 
You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. It's WeUseCoins.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. E-cigarettes are under attack again by busybodies who would like to put a stop to advertising of e-cigarettes. Allie has the story. We're going to get further into that. Of course, we'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. We've got archives, and they go back all the way back to 2006. You can just go click and download. It's the end of 2006, but that's a lot of archives, probably more than you could possibly listen to in any reasonable amount of time. Go to freetalklive.com. It's all free, so enjoy. freetalklive.com. Now, I want you to imagine being able to spend your Bitcoins, and if you don't have Bitcoins yet, we'll tell you how to get some later, uh, with a credit card through a completely decentralized non-bank system. You swipe, and Bitcoin is removed from your wallet. It makes Bitcoin just as easy to use as money in the meat space world. Now, this technology sounds pretty awesome, right? And it would be investing, uh, worth investing in, uh, don't you think? If you agree, you can go and learn more and see their Indiegogo campaign at mybtc.cc. I saw the uh, the actual credit card, the kind of the process, the printing of the card. Uh, Temper, who is the the guy behind this, was at the Texas Bitcoin conference, and some people were were very interested in this. My, Temper, the one that goes in the chat room, sometimes? our caller and wow. chatter. Yes, uh, the dude's brilliant. I mean, he's like a brilliant designer of computer things, and he's come up with this Bitcoin credit card. So, but he's looking for investors, and you can help him out at mybtc.cc. That's mybtc.cc. Uh, so we're talking about the e-cigarette restrictions. Want to get back into that? Allie's got the story. And where's uh, what's the source on your story? Allie? This is NPR. NPR. In fact, when you get a chance, send me that on yes. Facebook, and then we'll post it. So you, if you are on our Facebook page or Twitter or Google Plus, will be able to get the details. Let's go to Dave first, though. He's in New Hampshire, listening to LRN.FM. Go ahead, Dave. Hey guys. Hey, this um, I'm what used to be known as Dave in Youngstown, and I. Moved up finally Saturday morning across the border, and I'm in Concord now. Oh, wow. Day. Dave, you actually came to yeah. uh, the Keenvention. Yes, I did. So you had talked yes, about I moving did. to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, and, uh, and congratulations on accomplishing that. I have, thank you. And I'd just like to tell you how warm the welcome has been in here. You know, you guys talk about this all the time. When I got here... The welcome was so warm, it was almost crushing. Oh. Aww. It was just great. So I thought I'd let you know that. Well, gosh. And now I remember when you posted uh, something about this, because, you know, there are various different kind of Facebook groups where people who mm-hmm. are here are kind of socializing and planning things. And then there's other people who are on the outside who are kind of watching. And, and then you posted that you were coming up. If I'm recalling correctly, you didn't really bring too much up with you. So it wasn't like you had a big old moving party, right? No, I didn't. I had one car load. It was stuff in my car and me, and that's it. So so what was the reception? I mean, was there something, did you have something at all for people to come to? Because, you know, kind of the typical moving story uh, when people move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project is, you know, they move in a bunch of stuff up, and there's 30 people that'll show up at this move-in party and unload a truck in under an hour. You know, a truck uh, full of stuff that has taken a day to pack is unloaded in less than an hour. It's an amazing feat. And uh, but you didn't experience that. So what was it that you specifically did experience about the kind of the welcoming uh, aspect of the community? Well, I um, the first thing I did was go into my new job, and the second thing after I left there was to go to Tandy's for the Saturday morning buffet that they have here with Liberty People. And I got there a little bit late, but everybody was very nice. I'm actually living with a uh, previous mover up here. Awesome. Um, and the Facebook, uh, I put it on my own page, and so that went out only to my friends. Since I wasn't moving to Keene, it wasn't appropriate for the Keene uh, page, right, mm-hmm. necessarily. But um, I just got such great response, and I've already been in contact with NEMI, for instance, 
and the, the new movers uh, who have come in here, not even new movers, any of the movers, um, people I've met on Facebook that hadn't yet met in person. Um, on Saturday, also, a uh, caller or Sunday called in. His name was Dason. He also came in on Saturday. So you're getting a lot of people on a single day. I don't know where else you can move in the world where people just be there to greet you and welcome you and ask you if you need any help. Moving. Right. I mean, you instantly have a, a, a resource, a group of friends who you don't even know yet. And that's kind of the kind of bizarre but amazing aspect of the Free State Project is you move here or in some cases just visiting, right? Like coming to Pork Fest or Keenvention or, uh, you know, Liberty Foreman. And tell me if you experienced this, Dave, when you just came to visit. Uh, it's like you connect with people on a level that it's it's hard to find in most places because you understand already the ideas of liberty so it's not like you have to spend any time covering those areas with these new people that you're meeting they're already on board you don't have to convince anybody of, of right. these ideas and so there's just something about the uh, the people and the similarities that they have that make it really easy to bond i mean was that your experience at all when you were just kind of up here visiting um it was you know um and even when I moved up Saturday, uh, there were people who said it's good to have someone who gets it without having to have it explained. And yeah. everybody's just saying, welcome home, and it's just been great. And I just thought I'd pass that on because it really is that way. Now, how it was? Really uh, now, now, I have to say, I've always felt like Concord is one of the areas that really doesn't get as much mover, as many movers as like Manchester, or it seems to get fewer movers than it should, based on its population and you know how convenient it is for doing political action. How many people were at this meeting that you attended on Saturday? This kind of morning uh, brunch. Um, they, I, I got in there late, but there were probably still probably oh ten or twelve people, and Not I bad. guess half a dozen had already left. Not bad. And I'm close enough to uh, another person who's going to be moving. She's already part of the Liberty community, um, and she's, I can't remember the name of the town, but it's just, a, you know, a short drive from here. I'm going to be helping her move in on this coming Saturday. It's great. It's so easy. It's to move or she... <laughs> yeah, one, you're, you know, a week away, you're here a week, and then all of a sudden you're helping somebody else move in, and right. you're, no long, you're no longer the new guy, you know, <laughs> you've only been here a week. Right. So right. welcome, Dave. Anything else you want to share tonight about your experience? No, I was just so impressed. Well, thank thanks you very much. Thanks for the call. It's great to have you here in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project and appreciate the, hearing the story tonight. 855-450-FREE. That's uh, the toll-free number. Well, isn't I it felt, just wonderful? I felt similarly, that? I think, when I moved. I just remember that. You had a carload of stuff, too, right? It overwhelming. wasn't a big, yeah. big move for you? And my roommates helped me move in, but it wasn't, yeah, it was no big deal. And I just remember... After meeting everyone, just sort of being overwhelmed with the sense of, I really like it here. I like how everyone is just super welcoming and nice. And when people find out that you just moved, they just seem very, like, interested in you as a person. Well, like, yeah. I mean, what's your story, right? I mean, yeah. everybody who comes to New Hampshire is part of the Free State Project, and we'll explain what that is here in a moment. But everybody who uh, comes here, they all have a, a path that they're on, right? And and some, that path leads out of New Hampshire again. Some people move here, they then have to go somewhere else. I know uh, our, our friend Meg uh, who used to be on this show, she had to go and take care of her dying grandfather, and, and he right. uh, just passed away now. So maybe she'll be coming back soon. So, you know, everybody's got their individual path to liberty, and what was it that led them not just to the ideas of freedom, but then eventually to the Free State Project? And it's just so exciting when, when new people come here, and it just seems to be accelerating. We're all here for different reasons, but really the same reason. Ultimately, the, the reason of freedom. 855-450-FREE. We'll tell you more about the Free State Project and also return to the e-cigarette story. Uh, 855-450-FREE. You can also take control here. This is Free Talk Live. Did you know that organic sulfur can cleanse and defend your body against the poisons we're exposed to each day? Organic sulfur crystals from sulfurdefense.com help by forcing oxygen and nutrition into your cells while eliminating heavy metals, contaminants, and damaging radiation. Defend yourself and family from toxic assault with one of the most critical and essential minerals available today. Order online at sulfurdefense.com. 
That's sulfurdefense.com or call 800-593-6273. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Free Talk Live. Welcome to the world's most powerful spells by High Priestess Catherine Olds. Now, this is kind of like a lot of those religions where you can just sort of just name yourself whatever you want to, right? <laughs> right, right, exactly. Super wizard. <laughs> <laughs> right there at the top. Wait, one year unconditional money back guarantee. So like if your spell fails over the course of the year. <laughs> oh, the tumor came back. <laughs> Here are the terms. You must give the spell time to work. This time frame is 120 days from the date of purchase. That's <laughs> four, four months. months. A request made. I don't even want the lover back after four <laughs> months. <laughs> you must allow for time for a full energy exchange. Sometimes our spells take time. It must not be that powerful. Why can't I upgrade? I mean, she charges $97. Oh, wait, no. no there's, a, there's a sale that ends tonight right. at midnight. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. E-cigarettes, apparently the new thing to hate. We're going to get deeper into the story about some critics attacking the advertising now for e-cigarettes. We've also seen news, and I've got the story here about Los Angeles banning the use of e-cigarettes in the same places where cigarettes are banned. So these things are under attack from all fronts, and it's really tragic because they're an amazing invention and more people should know about them. Uh, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number if you want to share your experience. Maybe you've been an e-cigarette user and you have experienced these people, whoever these critics are. You know, Are they the kind of people... You know how some people can be nasty to a cigarette smoker? Yes. I, I'm sure you've experienced this, Allie, uh, as someone who is a cigarette smoker. But people, just- people, some some of them really who, I don't know if it's more likely to be someone who quit smoking or someone who's not really been around a lot of smoking, but there are some people who just hate smokers and smoking so much 
that they take out all that aggression. Anyone they see with a cigarette in their hand, they just like feel that it is their job to try to convert that person into hating cigarettes as much as they do. Right, or at the very least, they just want to be rude and nasty to somebody who's smoking up this whatever, you know, room or place or out, outside of a doorway. Or just they want to say something. They want to mold the world in the way they want it, and they just have to, they have something to say. I wonder if they do that to e-cigarette users, too. Are people Probably. who use e-cigarettes experiencing that same derision from uh, the, you know, the critics? Certainly, it's happening in more public forums, you know, like, for instance, the banning of the use of the e-cigarettes. There are certain people who are pushing this. I'm just wondering if it has kind of trickled down to in-your-face confrontations mm. over this. Like, how dare you use that e-cigarette around my child? You're just encouraging them to smoke. Well, I'm sure it has because I've heard stories of people using their e-cigarette inside, like in a mall or mm-hmm. something, and that they have been harassed because of it. So sure, I'm, I'm sure it happens all the time. Tell your story if you have one to share. 855-450-FREE. I said we'd uh, help you out getting Bitcoins. Well, the first step to getting Bitcoins, or fractions of Bitcoins, depending on how much you have to spend, uh, you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. But when uh, you want to get Bitcoins, you have to have a wallet. And blockchain.info has a wallet for you. In fact, it is probably the best online wallet you can find. Uh, blockchain.info, go there and get signed up. They've they've actually opened over a million wallets for people, and it's free to have a Bitcoin wallet from blockchain.info. Plus, they've got a handy Android app that makes it very easy to send and receive Bitcoin. But if you don't have an Android phone, if you've got an iPhone or a Windows phone or you know, BlackBerry, you can use the website, blockchain.info. They're building an HTML5 app that I'm told uh, has been completed, or maybe they're still working on it. Uh, but uh, blockchain.info, you can use their website on your sm- smartphone to do the same thing that the app does. Just the app is a little bit more convenient. Uh, Bl- blockchain also has tools to make it easy to send and receive your Bitcoins anonymously. It's time for you to join millions of other Bitcoin users and get your free Bitcoin wallet today at blockchain.info. So, Ali, let's go further into this. The, apparently, people are upset. Some people, the busy yes. bodies of the world, some of them are uh, upset at the e-cigarette advertising, which they say is so cool that it's going to attract kids to smoking. Yes, and we were talking before about which rules have already been applied to advertising of cigarettes, and this article does cover a few of those. Um, they include bans on uh, sports sponsorships, cartoon characters, flavors, and TV advertising, specifically TV. And radio as well. Okay. Yep. Um, so, blue e-cigs use a cartoon character named Mr. Cool in a television mm. campaign. Um, and, you know, the article writer notes that this is familiar with what some uh, cigarette industry, you know, ads have done in the past with their, like, I think, what do they use? Like a cartoon Joe camel? camel? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Vince Wilmore of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids says these messages attract youth, especially the Sports Illustrated bikini ad. It's going to appeal to teenage boys, he says. Blue maker Lorillard has not... Lorillard is also the maker of Newport cigarettes, by the way. Um, Blue maker Lorillard has not responded to NPR's request for comment. Blue's website asks if you're 18 to enter and ads um, say, not for minors. Wilmore says, nonetheless, they re-glamorize smoking and threaten to reverse decades of progress and preventing (laughs) kids from getting hooked. See, the thing is, I don't Mm. even know how one could try, unless you just want to ban any kind of advertising of anything that could be harmful for children. I don't know how you could distinguish between advertising for kids and advertising for adults. I mean, if you're, you would think that an adult magazine like Sports Illustrated that advertising there, I don't see why that would be so controversial. Maybe mm. if it was playing on like Nickelodeon, I could see people feeling right. and creeped out by that. Nickelodeon's totally not going to accept ads for e-cigarettes. Exactly. It's not going to be happening. Well, I mean, okay, so we kind of talked about this during a break, but it's I think it's worth mentioning on the air. I, I guess kids are probably still looking at Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. I know we certainly did when I was younger. I mean, that was a very interesting thing to a young person teenager or a young boy or whatever however we are now living in the internet age where why would you need a magazine to go and get pictures of girls in bikinis or right. naked ladies i mean it's not hard to find that content now every young person who has a smartphone has a myriad of bikini photos at their fingertips well there's no doubt so. in my mind that some teenage boys or minors are going to see this ad yes but my question is how can they 
be upset with the blue e-cigarette makers for running an ad in an adult magazine and saying kids could see that. Well, that's just it. Anywhere that a child could see something, they're going to get upset about it. And, and they don't get upset at people who advertise beer and alcohol and other bad things They for may. Them. They may get upset about those things. I mean, we don't know who we're talking about here. A lot of these people are, are control freaks. That's so true. They might be just me. as upset about that. And I believe alcohol is something you can advertise in magazines, but... You can advertise on TV. Yeah. Yeah, so it's only cigarettes that they've banned from television yeah. and radio. Um, this Wilmore guy says, kids may view them as something they can use that's not going to harm their health without realizing they contain very addictive... Addictive mm. nicotine, Wilmore says. Right, because kids are just so ignorant. Kids have no idea about those e-cigarettes. Those, those wouldn't have nicotine in them. I mean, come on, really? Do, do Are we expected to believe that young people do not understand this? Okay, maybe a five-year-old wouldn't understand that there's nicotine in an e-cigarette, but what teenager so wouldn't understand they that? They actually quote a teenager, um, Thomas Mason, who's 16, uh, thinks they're beneficial he, they quote him, and the e-cigarette is like flavored nicotine. So far as I think, I think that nicotine is supposed to help you stop smoking, Mason says. <laughs> that perception worries uh, Tom Frieden, director of U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Like the kid well, said, that the, that nicotine is supposed to help you quit smoking. It's true. And in, in a lot of cases when people use the e-cigarette, they're using that nicotine to quit smoking. I'm right. not sure where the emphasis is put. Yeah, when it's he a says strange it. sentence, but even even in his misunderstanding, let's presume he's slightly misunderstanding. Yeah. Uh, even in his misunderstanding, what he does understand is that the e-cigarette can help people quit smoking. And he also so, understands that it contains nicotine. Right. And so that's the opposite of the scare, this kind of uh, fear factor that they're introducing uh, that's the opposite of the idea that, oh, well, kids are going to use this and start smoking again. It's going to glamorize smoking. Well, no, this young person understands that using an e-cigarette can help quit smoking. And most people in their teenage years understand the value of not smoking. I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's not like this is a hidden message in society. Cigarette smoking is definitely on the outs as far as popularity is concerned. It has declined in its popularity over a, a hundred years significantly. You know, and I've looked at studies or um, polls which say that it's gone down in use among teenagers or, um, you know, young people. But from my experience, I see a lot of young people smoking, like a lot, a lot yeah. more than old people. I think a lot of old people are quitting, and so I'd believe that maybe cigarette purchases are going down on average, but I see a mm. lot of young people smoking. I wonder about that, because I've, I've certainly heard that it has gone down over time. Maybe it's still significant, but down from right. what it's been in the past. You're welcome to share your thoughts here, 855 450 free. Are there some more interesting quotes? Because this is the kind of news story where there's you know. There's a little bit of back and forth between the people who are um, advocates of the e cig and people who are critics. I definitely want to hear the critics. I want to hear what they have to say. So will you share some of that when we come back sure. here in a moment? 855 450 free is the toll free number, and you can share your thoughts on whatever's on your mind. Are e cigarettes attracting young people to smoking? This is Free Talk Live. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 
Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional, quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up whatever you want here toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there on the site. Uh, You can actually create the content as well. So when you go to freetalklive.com, you see the stories there on the front page. There's news articles, sometimes YouTube videos. Maybe you want to put up you know, some sort of fun post, whatever it is you think is interesting, whatever you think our listeners would find valuable, entertaining, interesting. You put it up on the website and then it becomes subject to voting. And it's the system of Reddit. So if you're familiar with Reddit, you know how this works. Reddit is a kind of an upvoting, downvoting, social bookmarking website. And we've integrated Reddit right into the front page of our website. So if you've got a Reddit account, which is free, and a Free Talk Live account, which is also free, you just link the two accounts together in a very short process. When you go to freetalklive.com, and that makes it easy for you to submit content and then vote it up or down, whether you like or dislike. And then we will see what you think is interesting, and it makes it uh, you know easy for us to figure out what our audience thinks is is useful. So go to freetalklive.com and you can get interactive there. More about the e-cigarette critics here. They are uh, on the attack again and they're they're being emboldened too. I mean, they're yes. having success. We haven't gotten into the details yet, but Los Angeles has banned uh, the use of e-cigarettes from the pretty much the same places where cigarettes have been banned. So these people who believe that e-cigarettes are this 
uh, you know, this, this path to the devil for young children that uh, young people are going to see these ads for e-cigarettes and they're going to want to start smoking is kind of the idea here is that they're going to see e-cigarettes and they're going to think smoking is cool. And they're going to go off and start smoking cigarettes at some point. That's well, you belief. know, it may be true that there are young people out there who are thinking uh, where e-cigarettes might appeal more than smoking cigarettes would. But I think that those there are healthy reasons for that. Like, if I had a child, I'd rather them use an e-cig than right? smoke cigarettes because part of what's so dangerous about cigarettes, which is where people get all these crazy numbers like 4,000 chemicals, has to do with the fact that you're lighting it on fire. You know, mm. you're um, creating you know chemical reaction in which a lot of chemicals are created that weren't there before you lit it. And also the heat uh, is bad for you each mm. time you use a cigarette. You know, think of all that um, what you're you know, the actual smoke you're introducing into your system and the tar. Can't the cigarette is just, you know, it's vaporizing, which is already would be better, even if you're vaporizing tobacco, it would be better than lighting tobacco on fire. But not just that, it's not, it hasn't, doesn't have tobacco. It's just the. It's never enough, though, Allie. I mean, all the points you're making are great points, but the critics, they just. They just hate nicotine. It has to be just because it looks like smoking. They wouldn't be opposed to Nicorette, That's you know, having point. commercials, or it wouldn't be opposed to someone having, pa- you know, commercials yeah, for the why, patch. Why aren't Nicorette, uh, this gum, right, nicotine f- gum, basically? It's a delivery system for nicotine, an alternative delivery system that people use presumably to quit smoking. Why? Why isn't that, uh, you know, under attack? Because it doesn't look gr- like smoking. Uh huh. Doesn't have the same appeal, like it, because it looks. But wasn't, but isn't gum chewing cool for teens? I mean, couldn't that, true. in theory, I don't know. I guess, I guess, I get what you're saying, though. The idea being that since e-cigarette use mimics the process of smoking, that that would somehow uh, move young people into actual smoking. Well, well the, I want to get to more quotes here in a moment. Okay, but let's yeah. go to the phones first. We do have Dave on the line in Nevada uh, on the amp lines. Go ahead, Dave. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, go ahead. Good. Um, Along with uh, protecting kids against those dangerous e-cigarette ads, uh, what Facebook is trying to do now is protect kids against uh, gun advertisements. Um, I guess with pressure from these moms against, uh, or moms demand action. Hmm. I don't know if that name's long enough, but um, just probably like five, you know, moms in their basement. (laughs) <laughs> Them and uh, Bloomberg's the group there, the Mayors Against Guns or whatever, put some pressure on Facebook um, to do something. I, I guess there's, you know, Facebook obviously doesn't sell guns, but there's uh, ads on there. Like one of the ones I came across was like Texas gun ads or something, you know, and people will post kind of ads on there so they can get in touch with those people to mm-hmm. buy guns. So I guess one of the things that they're doing, among other things, is – People under 18 cannot see them. I guess you would have to, when you get a Facebook account, put your age, and I guess that's how it would know. But I guess they're blocking ads. Sorry, blocking ads to people under 18. Hmm. Well, see, I guess that's a better response than just you know closing down anyone's profile who puts anything about guns up there on Facebook. Well, now hold on, Dave. Just to clarify, are they blocking advertising or are they blocking groups about guns or both? They're, well, what they're saying now, and there's a whole bunch of different articles about it in the past week. What they're saying now, from what I've read, is that they're blocking advertisements from people under 18. And then it's kind of sketchy about people selling illegal guns and saying that, well, if they're selling guns without a background check, which is actually not illegal unless it's from a federally licensed dealer. That's the, the laws it are. May be, if you buy from a, uh, well, I, I don't want to say what it, what is and what is not illegal, but I know that there are different right. laws in different states. So maybe in oh, Nevada. Yeah, it depends on the, on the state. What's that? Sorry, yeah, it depends on the state. But right. Yeah, like if you're in New York, I highly, a, I highly doubt that New York uh, personal gun sales are legal. Highly doubt that. Yeah, uh, but, no, it's, it's not. That's one of the yeah. states that's actually pushing it. But if on a federal level, what the federal law says is that if you're a federally licensed dealer, you have to do a background check. And then, of course, like you said, a state can uh, they can make additional laws on that in the case right. of so, like you're in New, like you in New Hampshire, saying. for sure. I know that you can just sell a gun to somebody, a person to person. 
uh, gun transaction. I, you know, again, my understanding of the law is that's completely illegal here, but in a place like California or New York, you probably would be committing a felony uh, by doing that very same action. So it's not, certainly not Facebook's job to enforce the law, but I can understand why you know they they would feel like they want to be cautious in this area. Um, I mean, is it your uh, your belief that these ads should be shown to children? Yeah, I, I think it's kind of ridiculous because it's an ad. It's not where, you know, Facebook is not selling the gun themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just, you know, they, they're blocking these ads from kids. And I mean, to see an ad, it doesn't mean that the person is going to sell it to them. You know, it's just seeing basically, okay, well, they're selling a, a gun. It's not saying, hey, come, you know, buy this gun. If you're under 18, I'm going to illegally sell it to you. Um, And and then it kind of goes into the states where, you know, it's saying, well, if you're trying to sell a gun in a state where it's illegal in that state, I I don't know how they actually keep up with that. I think it's, I guess, if somebody uh, flags it and says, Mm -hmm. well, this person is trying to sell this gun in this state, uh, because like you said, you know, some states it's illegal, some states it's not, you know, in Nevada, it's it's illegal where you can do a person-to-person gun sale as long as you're not a federally licensed dealer. So I I don't know how they'd, you know, track that except for people flagging it. But it it seems like it's part of the, you know, um, how they're trying to demonize guns and Mm -hmm. say, you know, we don't want kids to see this because we need to keep pushing that guns well, are it's, evil. It's probably not a so, particular. I mean, just from a market perspective, it's probably not a particularly effective market segment to advertise to. I mean, one of the nice things about Facebook ads, and I don't buy Facebook ads anymore just because I don't want to give money to Facebook, um, but we used to do advertising with Free Talk Live on Facebook, and one of the nice things about Facebook is that you can target people based on age, you can target people based on location, you can target ba- based on interests. So oh. I could target if I were a gun dealer and I wanted to sell guns, uh, you know, get people interested in buying my guns, I could target only people that have an interest in guns or people that have an interest in a specific brand of gun. You know how mm-hmm. Facebook, you can like all right. kinds of different things. Well, if somebody likes, uh, you know, Ruger I, and I want to target those people for selling guns, I could totally do that with Facebook. So I, don't, I can't even well, imagine well, that well, somebody who's selling guns would be interested in the under 18 market segment. Now, most of those people aren't really good customers. I mean, they, they can't even buy the gun but for what i understand it's not even like facebook doesn't accept actual like if you're a gun store they're not going to advertise from what i understand it's people i actually create, have their, like if i create a page i actually have their policy uh right up here on the the website uh, prohibited content ads and sponsored stories may not contain content that is illegal or otherwise prohibited via facebook's advertising guidelines prohibited content includes tobacco products uh, that uh, so there's that you cannot promote tobacco or tobacco related products. You uh, which I believe includes yep uh, does include electronic cigarettes, mm. uh, weapons. Uh, so they may not, may not promote firearms, ammunition, right. paintball gu- even paintball guns, BBs, uh, guns, fireworks, explosives, pepper spray, <clears throat> knives, tasers, or weapons of any kind, including those used for self defense. Ads and sponsored stories may not directly or indirectly link to landing pages where people can purchase any of these products. And apparently, you can have certain groups, uh, but you have to be careful about how you advertise it. So they say you can have gun exposition today. That's acceptable, but unacceptable. Get your ammo here. So they say that it's okay if you can connect people to those interests, connect people who have those interests, so long as it's not leading to the sale of weapons or explosives. So there's some more information for you, Dave. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. And you know, it's a private website. If you don't like the rules, don't use Facebook, right? That's right. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. 
If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free, it doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, March 10th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,338, silver opened at $20.94, and Bitcoin is trading at $627.41. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush, online at SovereignBTC.com. Support also comes from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. For your residential mortgage needs, call Dorothy. 512-343-6494 or apply online at calldorothy.com NMLS 216624 Liberty Beat support also comes from My Magic Mud available at Brave New Books or online at mymagicmud.com In the news, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court commonly known as FISA has rejected a government petition Russia Today reports a request was made to allow the government to retain phone records for longer than the five years currently allowed. A group representing around 200 Nova Scotian farmers is opposing the introduction of genetically engineered apples from British Columbia, Canada. The Nova Scotia Fruit Growers Association is speaking out against a Summerland, B.C. apple growers application for approval of a genetically engineered apple that doesn't turn brown once sliced. Businessman Neil Carter believes his company's product will be valuable for the pre-sliced fruit market, but Robert Peel, president of the Growers Association, worries that customers' fears of genetically modified organisms may hurt business. On Sunday afternoon, thousands of activists walked across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Alabama, marking the anniversary of the violent Bloody Sunday marches of 1965. On March 7th of 1965, 600 protesters marched against the exclusionary voting process. The police gasped, beat, and ran over them with horses. Two days later, police prevented 2,500 citizens from marching across the bridge. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, now offering pro-pure water filtration, the only gravity-driven, all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin at 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online at bravenewbookstore.com. Support also comes from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online, massappealinc.com. And from growyourowngroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, March 10th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A group of Kentucky legislators is working to pass a bill they say would protect the privacy of citizens against drones. The Courier-Journal reports a bill has been filed to prohibit law enforcement agencies from gathering evidence with a drone without a warrant. It would not prohibit law enforcement from using drones to search for missing persons. It would also not affect the right of private companies to use drones so long as they don't carry lethal weapons. The bill is awaiting a hearing. It's supported by the ACLU. 
Over the weekend, Lebanon saw thousands of protesters take to the streets of Beirut in support of a law that would outlaw domestic violence. The renewed calls for the law came after the deaths of two women. Both are believed to have died as a result of domestic violence. The demonstrations also marked International Women's Day. Organizers of the march say every month one Lebanese woman is killed by domestic violence. Hackers have gained access to the personal blog and Reddit account of former Mt. Gox CEO Mark Karbalis. Forbes reports both platforms were used to post a message claiming he retains access to some of the bitcoins he claims had been stolen. In an attempt to support the claim, the hackers uploaded a series of files that included a spreadsheet of more than a million trades, the former CEO's home address, and a screenshot intended to confirm the hackers' access to the data. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them 512-459-5253. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, March 10th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. On May 22, 1992, beloved talk show host Johnny Carson ended his 30-year run of hosting The Tonight Show with a farewell episode that included special guests Saddam Hussein, KKK Grand Wizard Virgil E. Griffin, and a musical performance by The Flag On May 24, 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge opened, providing New Yorkers with a more efficient way of killing themselves and escaping their trash-ridden excrement cake city. The monument's historic opening was marked by hundreds of people jumping 275 feet to their deaths in order to avoid waking up every morning with the smell of horse filling their nostrils. Before the Brooklyn Bridge, there were very few ways for New Yorkers to free themselves from the cesspool in which they lived. One method was to tie cinder blocks on their legs and walk into the Hudson River. But of course, the banks of the Hudson were so brimming with garbage and raw sewage that the putrid stench would drive back even the most desperate suicide seeker. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you, of course, can bring up anything you want here. Toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And that is the Pro XPN toll-free line with you in studio tonight in here. And Allie. Allie's here courtesy of her radio show. She does a show every week called ALP. I was actually on there recently. That's right. Not this weekend, but the weekend prior to that. We talked about drugs. That was a good show. And I don't recall what your topic was this last week. Though. Last week, we talked about minimum wage. Oh, okay. Yes. And one of the things that's interesting about ALP, unlike Free Talk Live, where we'll go all over the map in a three-hour show, you guys do a two-hour show once a week, and you really zero in and focus on one issue in particular. That's right. And you really kind of flesh that out and go off and, I guess, you dig in deep to that issue. It's- yeah, we go off topic a little bit, but for the most part, we try to stay zeroed in on the one topic, like you said, And uh, if listeners want to hear our show on drugs that we did with you, Ian, or the show last week on... We weren't um, on drugs necessarily. We weren't on drugs necessarily, but we were talking a lot about (laughs) our experiences with drugs. Yeah. um, Because when we covered... Right, of all sorts. We covered a bunch of different ones there. And when you do a show on drugs, it can be... You know, we couldn't cover, obviously, everything because we haven't had experience with all the different ones. And there's not, you know, you can't do that in just two hours. So it was fun to sort of hash out experiences and do trip reports and things like that. Yeah. So go to ALPshow.com. You can get more of Allie there and also Ellen, her co-host. That's right. Yes. So ALPshow.com. And your podcast is available through that website. That's right. There's a Facebook page as well. All right, so we'll talk to you about whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. The critics are saying that e-cigarette advertisements should be restricted. Uh, that's the story that Ali has been sharing with us here. Throughout the first hour, we kind of were on and off it. We had yeah. different calls about different topics. And I do have some, you said you wanted some quotes from the critics, and I have, I have at least one of those. Yeah, the fear-mongering critics who are essentially saying that e-cigarette advertising is making it so teenagers and young people want to smoke cigarettes 
that that will be the ultimate result here. That not necessarily is it going to be the first step, but the idea being that a young person will see an e-cigarette advertisement. Uh, it, they gave a couple of examples. There's one where a, the brand Blue, um, they apparently bought an ad in the, uh, the, the swimsuit Illustrated, edition. Yeah, yeah. Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. It's got a girl with a bikini bottom. You can't see her face. It's basically a crotch shot of her wearing a, <laughs> a, a, a bikini bottom that says Blue Electronic Cigarettes on it. It says slim, charged, ready to go. And that seems like sexual innuendo to some extent, um, but, you know, whatever. That's how they feel like they need to sell their product. There's another one where there's somebody who's Mr. Cool. They've got a cartoon-style mm-hmm. character that is the uh, the mascot, I guess, for the product. And they're saying that these, these advertisements are going to entice young people into using e-cigarettes, which will eventually lead them to smoking. Right. And... Which is ridiculous. Or just, I think, for some people, the kids using e-cigarettes, kids using nicotine or anything like that, they're opposed to it, um, which we already talked about how, you know, a lot of dangers associated with cigarette smoking and, you know, even cigar smoking are, the dangers are different with e-cigarettes because you don't have the combustion factor involved. It's vapor and it's just the um, propylene glycol, the nicotine, and the vegetable glycerin that dissolves the nicotine. Now, it's not to say that it's safe to use e-cigarettes. I mean, people don't really know uh, you know, what long-term things could happen from using e-cigarettes, but it sure does feel safer. It doesn't seem as dangerous. Oh, yeah. A lot of people who switch say that they don't feel any of the um, negative consequences they feel in smoking, like you know that their lungs feel better, and mm-hmm. they give a lot of the same kind of feed feedback about switching to the e-cig as people who quit smoking give. Now, I would rather, like you know, I would definitely say that it would be better just to quit something you're addicted to, you know, to live an addiction-free life. If that's possible, that's preferable. But if you're talking about reducing your harm, if you're just saying, you know, I I can't help it, I'm just addicted to nicotine, but this is better than smoking, then I would say go for that. It seems like a no-brainer. Let's get into the quote from the uh, busybody. This is from Dr. Tom Frieden. Uh, director of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and oh, Preven- Prevention. He sounds like a real fun character. He says, what we're seeing from the e-cigarette companies is disgraceful. <laughs> They're working to get another generation of American kids addicted to nicotine. Um, he says the Food and Drug Administration is working to regulate e-cigs and notes the first time it tried, the industry sued to stop it. They're hoping any new regulation would prohibit, prohibit marketing that might result in kids trying them. Uh, e-cigarette makers say that's going too far. And now I have a quote from um, a president of the e-cigarette company Cigarex. He says, if you start pulling ads based on what children are going to do, there'll be no alcohol advertising. There would be no condom advertising mm-hmm. or any other types of advertising for that matter. So I think that's a good point that people like to use children as their reason for wanting to ban lots of things and that that's not really fair to pin it all on the kids i don't even really think it's about that i think that that's just a convenient excuse what do you think it's really about i think it's really about hating smokers yeah i i i think you're right about that i mean it's not to say i don't believe that these people want to save the children i think there probably are people who are you know honestly believe that this is bad for kid children and it has to be banned. So I don't want to say that there aren't people like that, but I, I totally agree with you that the, the real push to stop the use of e-cigarettes, especially like what's happening in Los Angeles here, uh, where they're banning e-cigarettes from pretty much every place where cigarettes are banned, which means that if you're in a bar, for instance, a place where children are typically not allowed, you will then have to go outside. And wouldn't children be more likely to see you if you're smoking out on the street than smoking inside a bar? See, this is what makes me think it's about just hating, disliking smokers in general because yes. a lot of the reasons, which sound pretty legitimate, that people give for being against um, public smoking have to do with the secondhand smoke aspect, whether it's that they believe that secondhand smoke is harmful right. or that they don't like the way it smells or they don't like the way it sticks to things, you know, um, like fabrics. But but this takes this, away that this, this is like well you know this is actually perfect because you can say well what if we had something or people could technically kind of smoke but it's not going to have any of those after effects of the actual smoke coming and there's off. no effect from secondhand 
e-cigarettes. I mean, that's right. just not a concern. By the way, the secondhand smoke stuff is way overblown Definitely. as far as its supposed dangers. But I could understand that somebody wouldn't necessarily like the smell of it or it's, yeah. it's y- icky or Some whatever. Some people would prefer that all the smokers would go away just because they don't like the secondhand smoke aspect. But when you say, well, what about with e-cigs, the people who want to ban those? They still hate it. They yeah. still hate it. And, and I, you're absolutely right. It is because they look down their nose at the nicotine user. And that that has to be the, the motivation here because it's better for you. It smells better. There's no lingering odor with these things. I mean, the, the only time... Uh, that I've ever really had a, a real noticeable, like, that I could tell I was in the room with a vaporizer was when there was a social Sundays that we have. It's a weekly gathering that activists have here in the Keene, New Hampshire area. And one of those Sundays, we were in, we we're in a bar regularly, and one Sunday they had the New England Vapors. It's a group of people who share a common interest of oh, right. vaping, and they come together. And it's like some business owners, too, who carry the e-cigs, I think, right? Uh, probably there are business owners there, yeah. But there's a dude like at a table, and he's filling the e-cigarette things. He's got like different fluids, and they're mixing. And Oh, yeah. It's like and- there's like a whole... I don't... Should I say culture or something behind it? Like it's definitely like a hobby for a lot of people. Yeah, they're totally into it. So in that case, you actually had literally a bar full of e-cigarette users. Yeah. Um. So there were twenty of twenty or thirty of them standing in the same area. If you walked by, you definitely would smell these different flavors. But it's not unpleasant in any way. I would challenge anybody who says that they find cigarette smoke to be unpleasant to experience e-cigarette vapor and make the same claim. See, I don't know, because like I know people who don't mind the smell of cigarette smoke at mm-hmm. all. And so I think that and people who don't like it assume that it's just a given that anyone who doesn't smoke would hate the way it smells. But I think it's just totally subjective. Like, no, but that's what I'm asking. Could someone who doesn't like cigarette smoke also not like vapor? I mean, there don't know. seems It seems to me that there's nothing objectionable about e-cigarette vapor unless you don't like the smell of blueberries or something. Is it just saying people blow out smoke? Is it like a fear of dragons or something? What is behind <laughs> this? Because if you're chewing nicorette, they wouldn't have a problem no, with it. No, I think it's just hatred towards the nicotine user. I think that's, you know, it's not about keeping secondhand smoke away from people as much as it is restricting uh, the freedoms of the people who enjoy nicotine. 855-450 free. What is your speculation on these bans on e-cigarettes? We'll get into the details coming up. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth.
Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And it has happened. Uh, We had talked about it possibly going to be happening. Usually on Free Talk Live, I don't like to talk about proposed legislation or proposed city ordinances. But in the case of the e-cigarette ban, I made an exception a couple weeks ago, or I guess probably was like a week ago. Were we talking about this on your show? The I'm not sure. LA cigarette ban? I don't think so, no. Or not your show, but I mean the last time you were on Free Talk Live. Um, because we did talk about this coming, and it was uh, it came out of the committee when the last time we discussed it in Los Angeles, where they're now they are now banning the use of electronic cigarettes. I want to get into more of that story here and exactly what is being banned and how is it being banned here in a moment. But if you are somebody who actually cares about freedom, and there just aren't enough of you, If you care about freedom, you really need to look into the Free State Project. If you were tuned in last hour, you heard the call from Dave, uh, formerly of Ohio. He just made the move within the last week up here to New Hampshire, and he was blown away. Had a warm reception. By the the warm reception that he had uh, when he went to a a meetup. They have, you know, weekly meetups in the the Concord area. I don't know if they're weekly, but anyway, they have regular meetups in the the Concord area and all across New Hampshire, Manchester, Keene, the Seacoast. There are people, Nashua people get together who love freedom for socializing uh, purposes, let alone all the activism that is happening up here. Now, if you're a smoker, New Hampshire isn't the perfect place to be, but if you're a smoker, it's hard to be anywhere uh, these days. Why is New Hampshire not a perfect place to be? There is a ban on uh, the use of cigarettes inside business establishments, as I understand it here. Unless you're in a private club. Private clubs are exempted. That's true. Um, Which I know of a few that people go to specifically to, so that they can smoke and drink at the same time. Are there some around here? Mm-hmm. That's good to know about. I didn't. I was not aware. I know there used to be a hookah lounge here in Keene and people okay. went and did that there. Um, but anyway, there, so yeah, New Hampshire isn't a utopia. It's certainly not a freedom utopia, but we would like for it to be more free. And the idea behind the Free State Project is to concentrate liberty activists, people who not only understand freedom, they understand that you should be free to live your life how you want so long as you don't harm anyone else, and that in order to be free, you have to allow others to be free, which means that if someone's going to smoke, you have to let them. You know, don't, That's right. Not, Unless they're on your property, yeah. then I guess you can kick them out. You can create your own rules on your own property, but otherwise people should be allowed to do as they want. And so if you understand the ideas of freedom and you're willing to do something, anything to help advance those ideas— 
and to help move that policy of freedom forward on the governmental level and just be free and act more free, the Free State Project is for you. And there are over 1,500 people that are already here in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Allie, you and I are two of those 1,500. That's right. uh, there are over 15,500 who have pledged to make the move here. So we want to get to 20,000 people who've pledged to move. So we're still working toward that goal. We've already had tremendous advancements in not just politics, but also civil disobedience, success stories, and uh, just changing culture and creating media and putting it out there, putting the ideas of freedom out there on a regular I'd basis. I'd say the community has gotten a lot stronger. What the was, freedom community? Yeah, yeah, because you have people that have been around for a long time and have met lots of people, and uh, you know, you, you get here and... It's like you're different when you're around just a bunch of people who are like minded than you probably are now at home where you feel like you can't quite be yourself in that sense. Mm -hmm. So a lot changes and people get used to being in a community like this one. It's awesome. I mean, I'm uh, far more social now than I was when I lived in Florida. I didn't really, I mean, yeah, there's some libertarians down there, but they never really did anything of, of meaning. It's easy and at this point to take it for granted, right? Like if you haven't moved here and you hear people who have talking about it and even, you know, sometimes complaining about certain things, mm -hmm. it's, you know, a lot of people who have been here for a long time forget what it's like to be Elsewhere. isolated yeah. and not feel like there are other liberty lovers around. It's an amazing community. I mean, that's num one of the number one reasons. I mean, if not the number two, number one reason to come here, just to have a community of people who get freedom. So go to freestateproject.org, learn more about the Free State Project there, and get signed up because we want to get to that 20,000 number as soon as possible. Because once the Free State Project reaches 20,000 participants, there is then a five-year window of time in which all 20,000 and people will have to move here. So we've already had amazing success stories and we've only had, you know, 10% of the people that are actually here. That of of the the number that could be here. So our toll-free number tonight 855 450 free and I don't think I mentioned our Skype username. It's uh, you can Skype us at username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request if you're not already on our list. It will be accepted. So Reuters is reporting on the Los Angeles City Council voting Tuesday of last week to ban the use of electronic cigarettes, also known as vaping, from restaurants, bars, nightclubs, and other public spaces in the nation's second largest city. The spokes bureaucrat for Mayor Eric Garcetti confirmed to Reuters that he would sign the measure into law in the coming days. When he does, Los Angeles will join a growing list of cities, including New York, Boston, and Chicago, that restrict the use of e-cigarettes, which are battery-powered cartridges filled with liquid nicotine that creates an inhalable vapor when heated. At stake is the future of an industry that some analysts believe will eventually overtake the $80 billion a year tobacco business. Public health experts fear that vaping, which has recently gained popularity among teens and young adults, may serve as a gateway to smoking for the uninitiated. And this was the, the big fear that they mentioned previously on this, that, uh, this is, that using e-cigarettes is going to somehow bring teenagers into using cigarettes. And I just, I find that hard to believe in general, but I'm sure there's some sort of case study. There's got to be a teen out there right. who has actually moved from e-cigarettes to cigarettes. I'm sure it exists, but you know, all the, I feel like if you start with an e-cig, there's just... Like if someone tried to, if someone was an e-cig user and tried to pitch cigarettes to them, it would be really hard because you're a lot more limited with cigarettes. You don't get to choose flavors or uh, like level of nicotine and they're way more expensive and it's mm -hmm. worse for you. Like what would compel someone to go to start smoking if you're already, if you're a Hooked on the e-cig, right? Yeah, that's what I want to know is, you know, how likely is this? This is the fear that they're citing. Critics also point to potential harm posed from secondhand vapor. Oh my gosh, e I was waiting for this to happen. Can for them to start this? Pointing to secondhand vapor. That's awesome. Saying that too little is known about the effects of the chemicals contained in the cartridges. We have an obligation to protect the workforce from the effects of secondhand aerosol exhaled by people who choose to vape on e-cigarettes, said City Council member Mitch O'Farrell, who co-sponsored the proposal. He went on to say, We also have a responsibility to protect our youth and everyone else in public places from the carcinogens found in the ultra-fine particles in e-cigarette aerosols. Wow. Now, I don't know about uh, the claim that there are carcinogens in e-cigarettes. Have you ever heard anything about that, Allie? I'm really, I really wouldn't claim to know anything about it. 
Yeah, I'm I'm certainly no expert, um, but uh, you know, as I understand, my basic rudimentary understanding of the science would be that carcinogens are far more present in smoke due to the I would combustion think so. process, right? But uh, if you know more about that, would love to hear from you at 855-450 free. All I know is if I'm in the same room, if you were using an e-cigarette alley, I would have a tough time identifying the flavor. If you weren't blowing it directly at me. Now, you are across the table from me. So if you were sitting on the end of the table where yes. you would normally sit if Mark were here, I, there would be almost no chance that I would even be able to, like, if you were to ask, what flavor am I using? I would have no idea because, like, the e-cigarette vapor, it dissipates so quickly that it probably wouldn't really reach me in any meaningful way. It's certainly way. not like an aerosol. It's not like a, a gas out, it, like spits out at you. Well, it's, not like it's, hairspray or anything. Yeah, certainly not like hairspray. Uh, you certainly have to direct it towards someone on purpose if you want them to smell it. We're coming up. Free Talk Live. That's the sound of your door being kicked in by an intruder with a single kick. Criminals know that your doors are weak and your alarm system can keep them out. That's the sound of the same door, now protected by the Door Sentinel. Standard locks, deadbolts, and alarm systems can't prevent forced entry. Harden your door and door jam with the Door Sentinel. Go to MySafeDoor.com. That's MySafeDoor.com and enter coupon code SAFE for 15% off of your order. The Door Sentinel, your home's first line of defense. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner, and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. A Rasmussen poll reveals that nearly all American voters share a deep fear of botching another election, with most voters admitting that selecting candidates for public office is something they're historically just not particularly good at. I really hope I don't completely f*** things up as usual, but you never know, things do happen. According to the poll, three quarters of voters said election day panic would cause them to base their vote entirely on hearsay, while 93% acknowledged that they only recognized names of local candidates from signs along state highways. In Cedar Rapids, Iowa, stunned friends and acquaintances expressed shock and disbelief when a body found in the woods turned out not to be Justin. Local residents found the naked corpse draped over a tree stump Saturday, and as news spread, many found themselves struggling to comprehend how it wasn't Justin lying dead in the forest. I heard the news, and I still can't come around to it. I just can't imagine that it's not Justin there lying dead in the woods. Are they absolutely sure it's not him? Friends and family are still urging authorities to double-check the body, or at the very least, bring in Justin as a suspect. This is the Onion News Network. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer Buzzbox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. 
See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free to bring up whatever you want here at 855-450-FREE. Though we're talking about e-cigarettes at the moment, and the busybodies who would like to and are being successful in some areas like New York, Boston, and now Los Angeles in banning the use of the e-cigarettes. I wonder why it's so easy to do in cities. Why Why would that be? Oh, that well, hmm, that's is a good question. Is it because people are in close... Closer quarters, you know, they're all packed together, so people are more mindful about what others are doing. Although in cities, when you go there, people tend to not look at one another. It's like they're mm-hmm. only wrapped up in their own lives. So it kind of surprises me that they would be such busybodies. Yeah, you ask an interesting question as to why it's it's more likely that this busybody stuff happens in big cities. At least first, it seems to come to the the big cities first and sort of trickle down from there. Although, would it be as newsworthy if small town California went That's ahead true. and banned the use of e-cigarettes. Would that make the headlines that Los Angeles? So maybe maybe it is happening in smaller places. We just don't don't know about it. But yeah, you certainly hear about these places like LA, New York It's City. banned in Mexico. E-cigarettes? Yes. All of Mexico? I, I think so. I'm going to look it up, but oh, I think horrifying. so. It happened and it was kind of like no one knew because I don't know I don't know how many Mexicans out there you know, using the e-cig and had to put it away because of that. I'm not, I'm really not sure. I don't, I don't get the idea that it's something that is strictly enforced, but so my, technically it's a law. My answer to your question before we get back into what's going on in Los Angeles is just total speculation. Would love to hear your thoughts at 855-450-FREE or Skype us at username lrn.fm as to why it is big cities are more likely to do this. But it would seem to me that a big government would attract would be more likely to attract people who want to control others. Obviously, all the governments can attract those kind of people because there's certainly yes. plenty of corrupt towns. There's plenty of town governments where it's the good old boys network, you know, scratching each other's backs. But you think the most corrupt of politicians are more interested in the cities? There's more power to be had, right? right. There, there are bigger budgets. There's more money to siphon. There's more money to reward your friends and punish your enemies. Yes. There's more power over others, and that's what a lot of these, the politicians okay. are seeking. I could see that. So and and of course there's in a in a big place like that you've also got more competing factions for those seats of power and so the worst will probably rise to the top more so um, in a place like a big city you're more anonymous as you pointed out when people are on the streets they don't know each other and so they they act like it right they mm-hmm. don't know one another and so they're unfriendly towards one another not ne- very neighborly not at all and uh, when you move to new hampshire uh, or when i moved to new hampshire i and i didn't come from a big city i came from sarasota florida which uh, the city itself is fairly small in population it's like 75,000 uh the the county is maybe more like 350,000 so there's a fair amount of people in the area but still nothing in comparison to a new york city or or even larger cities in like tampa and there people don't really talk to one another but here It's easy to make eye contact with people on the streets. It's easy to say hello to them. It's more common that things like that happen. I was walking on the streets today, said hello to to more than one person. Right. And I didn't even, I didn't know them. People hold the door for you. It's, you know, just as, just as friendly as anywhere else will go. So uh, when you translate that kind of small closeness of interaction between people into politics, it changes how things are with politics in a place like Keene. Uh, or even in a place like Manchester. Manchester's 100,000 people. It's the biggest city in New Hampshire, but that's still a lot smaller than a lot of places. And only so many people are interested in political action, and they all kind of know one another, and everybody knows who everybody else is. And you really you know where everyone lives as well. I mean, it's not it's hard to go and look up whatever politician you want in the white pages, and odds are good they're going to be listed. Um, so these people are more accessible they're easy to they're easy to talk to in comparison to other politicians and i think that the accountability factor in a smaller place like this also has some limiting effect 
on how on the kind of stuff that they can get away with. That's not to say that they're not little tyrants. I mean, they absolutely are in their own way. For instance, Keen passed a totally illegal, what what appears to be illegal, ban on the sale of uh, synthetic drugs. Oh, right. And that was totally based on sensationalism and fear mongering on the part of certain parents in the area who lobbied the city council to do this thing. And of course, it passed unanimously. So there wasn't a single liberty oriented vote on the city council. But yet, you know, you don't see the same level of restrictions in a place like Keene as you do in Los Angeles. So that's my speculation to your question of why are these things happening in places like Los Angeles and New York rather than small town USA. I think Mm -hmm. those politicians are just – they have to be more cautious about what they do. They have to feel like – a. In a small town, they have to feel like they are are really supported to do something like that by mm-hmm. the people rather than creating division. Because politicians want to be liked, especially in a smaller town. They want to be liked by everybody. So they tend to be fairly friendly towards people. Whereas these politicians, they don't care. They, they don't care what you think about them and their opinions about your e-cigarette use. They're going to tell you what to do. Well, another reason I just thought of why it would be a good idea to support e-cigarette use, especially in some of these cities where they have problems with a lot of littering and everything mm, is oh that yeah. e-cigarettes are a lot cleaner than smoking that you hold on to it when you're done right with it. you hold on to that thing because you paid money for it and you don't have cigarette butts being tossed everywhere that's a great point and you don't have the risk of starting fires i wonder if anyone has even brought that up in these discussions i'm the about, first one i hope you, you may very well be i've certainly never seen it in any of the the news stories but yeah i mean e-cigarettes are definitely better it's the for, green way to smoke totally. we should support it totally and that would probably work you know convincing politicians in keen to keep them legal yeah. Because the keen politicians want to be seen as green. So, anyway, back to the story here from Reuters.com. The, uh, let's see. They say that at stake is a future of an industry that some analysts believe will eventually overtake the $80 billion a dollar a year tobacco business. But the city council member Mitch O'Farrell, who co sponsored the proposal, said he has an obligation to protect the workforce from the effects of secondhand aerosol exhaled by people who choose to vape. He goes on to claim that there are carcinogens in e-cigarettes. And there is a study, apparently, this is being reported back in 2013. I went and I looked because we were sort of exclaiming confusion over this carcinogen claim. And apparently there's been a study, maybe not more than one, which Mm -hmm. raises questions about its validity, of course. Uh, There's been a study by the France... National Consumer Institute that says that many e-cigarettes, not all, but many e-cigarettes contain a, quote, significant quantity of carcinogenic molecules. Hmm. So they go on to say that uh, three out of ten e-cigarettes that they studied contained levels of formaldehyde and acrolyne that are nearly equal to levels found in standard cigarettes. So that, of course, is re- resulting in people freaking out. And But that's three out of ten. That's not all c- e-cigarettes. And the thing that they don't say here is what's the overall total? And what's because, the effect on, on the second-hand smoker? Well, right, because my question about these carcinogens is, is my understanding that you can – that when you're smoking things, that there's more carcinogens introduced because of the process of combustion mm-hmm. – So e-cigarettes don't have that. So all they can compare is how much carcinogenic molecules the cigarette has compared to an e-cigarette. They're not comparing the smoke, right? What they're comparing is the product itself, not the after product or the byproduct of the use of that. So I think that this is a study that, okay, maybe it's true that 3 in 10 have similar levels of carcinogenic molecules in the actual product. But what does that translate to when you're actually using the product? Right. Uh, I would guess that cigarettes are highly uh, carcinogenic in comparison to e-cigarettes. But again, the studies are pretty slim. I only found this one study when I was looking for it. Well, this is also just related to how it affects the non-e-cigarette user. You know, is the smoke exhaled or the vapor exhaled, excuse me, Mm -hmm. um, is that dangerous for people who aren't using the e-cig? And it just... I can't believe it. It just seems... Absurd. I, I don't know why. Maybe I am just ignorant, I guess, about it. But I'm going to say I, I would put money um, on that it basically has little to no effect. Well, the proposal in L.A. was opposed by makers of the e-cigarettes who pitched their product as a safer alternative to the traditional cigarettes. And they say there's no evidence that secondhand vape smoke 
It's vape smoke. Secondhand vapor. They, they actually use vape smoke in here. It's not smoke, people. It's vapor. That's right. That secondhand vapor is harmful. And I agree. There is no evidence. And anybody that's ever been around it knows is no, is nowhere near as dangerous. If it's dangerous in any way, it's nowhere near as dangerous to uh, cigarette smoke. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number here tonight. You can share your thoughts on e-cigarettes or whatever's on your mind. Take control of Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com the TalkStream Live app for iPhone, iPad, and Android is the fastest and easiest way to access live talk radio anytime, anywhere. Download the free TalkStream Live app right now and see for yourself. You'll enjoy instant access to the best in live talk radio. Find your favorite shows and discover some new ones. The TalkStream Live app is available in the App Store, the Google Play Store, or visit TalkStreamLive.com. That's TalkStreamLive.com. I'm David Cordeni, President and CEO of Cigna. We're proud to support the March of Dimes by walking in the March for Babies. It feels great to know that the money we raise funds life-saving research and programs that improve the health of babies. With your help, we can make this year better than ever. Join Cigna and our coworkers across the country in March for Babies to help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthier babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org and march to help our babies. Thank you. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. 
are you scared about e-cigarettes? Well, the critics are certainly trying to make them seem dangerous and trying to make them seem scary. And, you know, maybe there's some kind of risk involved in using e-cigarettes. But so what? It seems pretty clear to me that they're better for you than cigarettes. Uh, they're more pleasant to be around. So even if you don't like the idea of using nicotine, it's better to be around someone with an e-cigarette. It's more pleasant. It doesn't stink. It doesn't make your whole house smell. Right. I mean, you walk into a cigarette smoker's house, you know you're in a cigarette smoker's house, presuming they smoke indoors, Yeah. because it, the, the cigarette smoke has permeated every piece of fabric in that person's home. You got carpets, it, it's going to be awful. If you got uh, fabric window hangings, they're going to stink. It's going to be horrible. I mean, even most cigarette smokers acknowledge that, and that's why some cigarette smokers won't even smoke in their own home because they want it to have a resale value later on and make it so people want to buy the place. Or you just don't want to live in that, you know? Yeah, I bought a house that that was uh, owned by a cigarette smoker, and it took a lot of effort to kind of paint over all that, and you know, it was it was it was gross. Cigarette but- smoking is definitely not a a pretty habit, um, and I think that you know definitely. Going outside to smoke is probably a good way to mitigate its grossness. But, uh, you know, what the nice thing about the e-cig is that you can, I I feel like, comfortable using it inside people's houses. I wouldn't even feel really compelled to ask 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 if it's okay, just because I feel like, you know, you don't have to ask to take a breath in someone's house. Right, because it's so unoffensive. Like, there's nothing that, I've never met anybody who's been offended by e-cigarette use, although apparently On the same token, people people used to just light up cigarettes in each other's homes all the time without asking, because that was normal then. So, whatever that's worth. Let me go with more of the story, though, because what we're sharing with you here is a Reuters piece about how e-cigarettes are now banned in Los Angeles. Now, before I go on with that, I do want to remind you about cashintocoins.com. I told you earlier about how to get a Bitcoin wallet from blockchain.info. But then what do you do? How do you get the Bitcoins into the wallet? Well, you should go to cashintocoins.com. They make it easy, safe, fast, legal, and inexpensive. And customer service is their top priority. They change your cash via the form of money orders, checks, or wire transfers into bitcoins and their rates are great you can uh, donate some of your fee to charity and as always orders under 40 dollars carry no fee just go to cashintocoins.com and get started and get your bitcoins today if you've already have bitcoins you can get more of them Uh, again cashintocoins.com so the story here uh, from reuters there's a ban now in los angeles city council passed this last week and the mayor's office has a pledge to sign it i mean so this is a done deal and uh, advocates of e-cigarettes are saying they can help smokers kick the habit. There's no evidence that secondhand vape smoke uh, vape is vapor is harmful. The article says vape smoke is throwing me off. And this is also making the e-cigarette less appealing to people who might be interested in it. Right, because, because now you can't smoke, you can't you vape can't, inside. Exactly. Which is a huge uh, benefit to using an e-cigarette is that it's more convenient. You don't have to go outdoors. You don't have to inconvenience yourself. And you're not inconveniencing anyone else because it doesn't stink. But the, the haters are hating. They can't stand that people are, are using nicotine in an enjoyable manner. They can't stand that people are using nicotine in a way that is not as detestable, like immediately detestable as right. the use of uh, cigarettes. And they want to stop them because these people hate the use of nicotine. They can't stand that people use it for whatever reason they uh, they I think it's I think it's a superiority thing. I think that it's a, a group of people who believes they're better and they probably have their own vices by the way. Every one of these people who is against the use of nicotine is probably someone who drinks alcohol or somebody who has a caffeine addiction or right. whatever. They probably have some sort of vice. Maybe they're sex addicts, whatever. They're probably addicted to something. Maybe they beat their kids. Could be, and they just want to control others. Los Angeles ban differs, however, from restrictions in other major cities in that it was amended to allow vaping in lounges and e-cigarette stores and for filming or theatrical purposes. Well, that's interesting. I wonder what the details are on that. Could <laughs> could I claim that I'm acting Right. every time I'm using you the e-cigarette? You could take a video of yourself while you're doing it. Selfie. I'm just acting like a cigarette smoker. <laughs> Although we believe the final decision was made in the absence of credible science, it was more reasonable and sensible approach than the original proposal. That a statement from Enjoy, N-J-O-Y, the largest independent maker of e-cigarettes. Enjoy remains concerned, however, that banning e-cigarette use in public places could deter current tobacco smokers from using in the products. In all public places? 
Or just everywhere the cigarettes are banned. Everywhere that cigarettes are banned, with the exception of lounges, e-cigarette stores, and for filming or theatrical Okay, at least e-cigarette. Because I was going to say, it's lame to not let e-cigarette stores let customers test their products. Yeah. But pretty much everywhere else. So if you're in, you know, whatever, a bar or wherever it is that thing that cigarettes are banned in Los Angeles, Mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't be able to use the e-cigarette there. City Council action comes as the U.S. government is contemplating further regulations at the national level. The FDA has already proposed a rule that would bring e-cigarettes under its jurisdiction and could potentially require companies to register and pay fees, list the ingredients in their products, obtain approval for new products, and restrict online sales and marketing to children. So that would suck. Uh, A law passed in 2009 gave the FDA the authority to regulate cigarettes, smokeless tobacco, and roll your own tobacco. So now they are grabbing for more power. They want to be able to control the e-cigarette industry. Now, if uh, if e-cigarettes become regulated by the FDA, forcing companies to register and pay fees is going to drive uh, competition out of the marketplace. It's going to make it so that more businesses are unable to meet the requirements of whatever arbitrary fees they're going to charge because... You know, if, if you're starting up a, a company right now, you can enter the e-cigarette space simply by finding a manufacturer and mm-hmm. finding distribution channels and, and getting the product out there. But now they're going to be adding hoops if the FDA gets this approval, and it'll make it more difficult for people to start up their own businesses. Well, what's interesting is that you do see certain um, e-cigarette companies who want FDA regulation, sure, but it's like ones owned by Marlboro or Lorillard or yep. um, you know. Any of these already, like any of the people who already are making a lot of money selling cigarettes who basically jumped on the e-cigarette bandwagon, these big companies, of course, would like to see them regulated because there's a lot of independent competition coming in um, from independent companies who, you know, their thing is just e-cigs. They're not trying to make cigarettes or anything like that. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'd be really cautious about buying e-cigarettes from the big cigarette. That's what a lot of the main ones are. Like the blue, the blue are brand. from the same people who make um, Newports. Lorillard is the owner of Blue, right? Yeah. So there you go. That's the latest on the ban. Now, what it doesn't say in this story is what the punishment is, and mm-hmm. I presume it's some sort of civil fine, some kind of violation, a ticket, if you will, if you get caught violating these things. But in a lot of cases, they put the responsibility on the business owner to restrict his or her clientele and making the business owner, as I understand it, um, making the business owner the one who's liable. So if you were to go into a bar in LA, Allie, with an e-cigarette and you were to light up uh, the e-cigarette, that that may actually make the bar owner the one who's liable for it. You notice that business owners respond a lot more... um forcefully when it comes to enforcing the state's laws than their own policies. You know, I feel like if I were in there and I was uh, smoking e-cig that they would just kick me out just to cover their own tracks or, mm-hmm. you know, just to make sure that, you know, for all they know, I'm working for the government and seeing how they're going to respond and they want to make sure that they they prove that they are following the laws there. They're scared. I mean, they're scared to death of what the government people will do to them. I, I had an experience with this in Austin. Uh, Michelle Seven and I and uh, several uh, several Liberty people were all hanging out at the hotel that we were all staying at. Uh, so kind of like an after hours party. They had this mm-hmm. fire pit thing. It was a, really it was a fancy hotel, and so uh, you know it was very nice and. We're, it's a fairly expensive hotel. It's like, you know, 200 bucks a night at minimum, wow. if not more than that. And it's uh, and so you would think that for the amount of money that people were paying and that you've got a group of paying clients, you'd leave them alone. But after a certain point or at a certain point, the bar uh, employees from the hotel, one of them came out and uh, alerted us that after midnight, uh, we would need to take all of our drinks to our rooms or else we would be in violation of some sort of liquor ordinance. Wow. And like, okay. And then later on, they <sighs> came back out and started getting a little bit more forceful uh, with us and, you know, demanding that we give up our glasses and things like that. And it was really unpleasant uh, what they were doing. And we were obviously willing to take the risk of. Look, no cops going to show up here. We're on a we're on private property. Right. Uh on a luxury kind of resort hotel. There's no cop just going to walk through here and check out what's going on at the fire pit at the Lost Pines Hotel out in the middle of nowhere in southeast uh of Austin, Texas. <laughs> right. But 
later on it's on just one not night, worth the liability it, to them. Well, right. Well, it happened two nights in a row, and the security agent came around after the bar people had threatened us, and the security agent basically told us he'd call the cops on us. Wow. 855. Well, on one hand, he said he wouldn't call the cops, and then later he said he'd call the sheriff's deputies. What? So it was very confusing. More coming up here. You can take control. Hour three's next on Free Talk Live. Quantum Vibe. It's here 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com from Big Head Press. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com. I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, March 10th, 2014. Here's the news. Radio VR News. A visit this week by the Ukrainian Prime Minister... White House correspondent Mark Smith reports the president has been working the phones on Ukraine and will meet with the country's leader later this week. During the weekend in Florida, the president placed calls to numerous NATO allies, including one to the leaders of the Baltic states on Russia's doorstep, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. They are hugely worried about what Moscow's seizure of Crimea means for them. Meantime, on Wednesday, Obama will meet here with Arseniy Yatsenyuk, who became Ukraine's prime minister days before Russian forces seized the Crimean Peninsula. Senators who want action on climate change are planning an all-nighter. Correspondent Jerry Boylander explains. About half the Senate's Democrats and independents will keep the Senate in session through the night and into tomorrow morning as they highlight what they say are the dangers of climate change and the need for action. Rhode Island Senator Sheldon Whitehouse has been giving weekly speeches on climate change, a series he calls Time to Wake Up. Ice caps and glaciers are melting. We measure that seas are rising. The all-nighter comes just a few days after the GOP-controlled House voted to block the administration's plan to limit carbon pollution from new power plants. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. The data breach at Target and other retailers is leading to new calls for a national standard for warning consumers that their personal information has been compromised. Correspondent Jackie Quinn has more. The theft of customer payment information has refocused attention that there's a patchwork of varying state consumer notification laws. But Congress is exploring how a federal standard could be enforced and what would trigger a notification. Retailers want laws that are easy to comply with, and consumer groups are worried about weakening existing protections in states with strong laws. One former White House privacy expert says it looks like we're stuck with a state-by-state -state approach unless there's a compromise at the federal level. Jackie Quinn, Washington. New York's Cardinal Timothy Dolan hopes and expects that Pope Francis 
will meet with victims of clergy sex abuse. But he also says the church shouldn't be singled out because child sex abuse is a broad societal issue. Correspondent Julie Walker has more. Cardinal Dolan says the church does need to do more. Pope Francis has come under criticism for doing too little after announcing a commission three months ago to study best practices on protecting children. Dolan was asked on NBC's Meet the Press if the Pope should meet with sex abuse victims. He probably will. Dolan has met with victims, as did the previous Pope. Hope he does. When asked his view on openly gay Missouri football star Michael Sam, Dolan said... Bravo. He notes the Bible says not to judge people. Julie Walker, New York. There's a closely watched election taking place tomorrow in Florida that both parties are pouring millions of dollars into in advance of November's midterms. Correspondent Tony Winton has the details. Republicans are trying to hold on to a seat that's been in their column for 40 years, but polls show a close race in the 13th congressional district. Political science professor George Gonzalez at University of Miami says it's test marketing for November's midterms. What set of issues should they strike upon in terms of trying to gain traction? Republican David Jolly is running hard against the Affordable Care Act. Let's replace Obamacare. But Democrat Alex Sink has fired back, saying Jolly is a threat to Social Security and Medicare. Would even force seniors to pay thousands more. With low turnout expected, mail-in ballots could prove decisive. Tony Winton, Miami. That historic civil rights march has roots in a modern-day struggle. As correspondent Kim Chandler reports, speakers at the commemoration of the 49th anniversary of Bloody Sunday are calling on Congress to help protect voters' rights and stop new measures that will block people from voting. Speakers including Martin Luther King III and the Reverend William Barber of the North Carolina NAACP urge Congress to pass the law bringing back requirements on states with a history of voting rights abuses. They were critical of the current bipartisan proposal that would resurrect preclearance but only put it on four states. They say states like Alabama and South Carolina should definitely be covered. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Rick Young. A harrowing situation on Broad Street came to its conclusion Thursday night as a group of hostages were freed from local comedy club The Laugh Up Lounge after a tense seven-minute stand-up set. Every once in a while he'd grab his notebook and I'd think maybe this is it. Maybe he's going to let us go. But he just kept talking. Additionally, The Onion recovered this video footage from the cell phone of one of the many captives. Please, if someone sees this, help us. Please help. Yeah, I'm micromanagement. This is totally going to wang it oh up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. Cool. I'm not a religious person, but at one point I said the Lord's Prayer, and it actually had a calming effect. Like, Jesus was standing next to me and said, you're going to get through this. I mean, sometimes you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, uh, don't take life for granted, because uh, you just never know when something like this could happen. So... This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're here to take your calls about whatever you want. If you make them, you may dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Username is lrn.fm, so feel free to uh, reach out to us with Skype if you have that. If you've got the choice, I say go with Skype. Usually you're going to sound better. If you have a smartphone, you can get a Skype app for your smartphone. And then it'll like it'll upgrade the quality of your phone call to us. Oh, nice! Uh, because when you're passing your voice over the old phone system, it cuts out certain portions of the the audio spectrum from your voice. But if you're using digital, uh, if you're using digital product like Skype, so even if you're using better. Skype over your phone, it's still better. It will be better. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. It's this. It's a. You know, the microphone in your phone is capable of picking up the full range of your human voice. It's just the old phone system is not capable of transmitting the whole range. But if you're on Skype, it's a digital end-to-end encrypt you know, kind of scheme. Right. So it works better. 
So Skype us at username lrn.fm. Ali, you wanted me to bring uh, in a story that I teased like last week and never got to. The yeah. the, the the haters. The uh, cheat sheet for dealing with haters by James Altucher. Yeah, I want to know about this. So right now, uh, some folks are dealing with haters here in New Hampshire. There's a news breaking news story out of Bedford. If you've been following FreeKeen.com over the last few weeks, last two or three weeks, you've seen the news stories that I've posted about Bedford, New Hampshire. Now, Bedford is a little town next to, I guess, a fairly large town. I think it's like 16,000 people that live there. Uh, but it's right next door to Manchester. Mm-hmm. So as you're driving into Manchester, you're coming from the west, you'll cross through Bedford, typically. And it's kind of known as like a like a soccer mom sort of town. Really? I guess. Okay. It's it's, you know, it's basically a bedroom community for people that work in Manchester. Right. And there are two Free State Project participants who are running for office in the town of Bedford. Now, because it's a town, they're having their town elections tomorrow. So unlike like November elections, they don't do that in the towns for whatever reason. They have their elections in March. Okay. So they're having an election tomorrow, and they're going to be electing uh, town council members, and they're going to be electing school board members. And a Free State Project participant is running for school board, and another Free State Project participant is running for town council. So this has created a huge level of controversy amongst the political class. In Bedford, and they are lashing out big time against the Free State Project participants. Now, it's interesting because for a long time, people in the Keene area where we're located here, and again, for people that don't know what we're talking about, the Free State Project is moving liberty activists all to the same geographic area. So we've come from different places, Ali, you from Alabama, me from Florida. I'm not sure where these gentlemen in Bedford move from, but people are coming from all over the place, right. and they're getting active here. And in a town election There's no amount of time you have to live there. So if I want to run for state rep, I'd have to have lived here for two years. Well, I qualify for that. But if I had just moved here, then I wouldn't be able to run for state rep. But I could run for mayor just right out the gate. You can move into into town and run for something. I got here yesterday and run for mayor. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's that extreme with the two gentlemen here. But one of of them has been in town for a few years. The other one just moved in 2013. Okay. So, uh, of course, that's one of the reasons why they're being attacked is, how dare these people move into town? They don't even know what's going on here and they're running for office. And, of course, they're also mentioning they're being attacked because they're part of the Free State Project and that the Free State Project is going to radicalize the government is the terms that they uh, they use. Let me share the actual hit piece flyer. So these, these guys have been attacked on uh, the cable access channel in town by members of the political class existing and former that. town yeah. councilors. There's this guy with like an eye patch on who's <laughs> attacking them. And uh, now they've sent a flyer. This is the day before the election. There's been a flyer mailed to all the houses in the town. Now, that's thousands of households in this town. I mean, if there's 16,000 people living in the town, it's, let's say there's 5,000 households at least. Right. Uh, you know, 50 cents per flyer, uh, that's just for the shipping costs. Include This is a color flyer, so include the cost of printing. You're probably looking at a buck per, per flyer I at least. I assume these ads... If it was so worth it for someone to invest all this money, must be by the people running in support of their own campaigns, right? I believe some of the people running are behind this. I don't know if any of them are the ones that signed it. No, I don't think so. So there are people who've signed this statement. And so it says, we, the uh, attention, Bedford residents, big, big block letters at the top, important election information paid for and authorized by the undersigned. We, the undersigned, represent 93 years of serving the town of Bedford as town councilors, school board members, and chief of police. We are proud to have served our community, and while we did not and do not always agree on all of the issues, none of us has ever served with an outside agenda. At this year's town and school, as this year's town and school elections are upon us, we felt that it was important to come together and address an issue which has all of us concerned, namely... The decision by a couple of people who have recently moved to Bedford under the Free State Project (laughs) and whose agenda is to radicalize government in Bedford and New Hampshire. Their interests lie in a broader agenda which is not congruent with the Bedford that we live in today. We would encourage residents to do their own research on these candidates and on this political movement which has targeted New Hampshire over the past few years and Bedford just recently. What we all agree. By, by the way, I think this is excellent. Free staters are an epidemic. Well, I, th- <laughs> I think this is ex- very exciting because 
they've just sent an advertisement about the Free State Project to every household in Bedford, New Hampshire. I know, in case you were wondering if the, if the Free State Project is actually a threat to the governments here, Look I guess they'll this. tell you. They're really freaked out by it. Yeah, what we all agree on, they say, for this year's town and school elections is that in is that it is in Bedford's interest to see solid candidates elected and re-elected to the town council and school board. While we may not agree with all of the issues that these candidates support, these are people who have lived in Bedford for over a decade, have no outside agenda, and have the best interests of Bedford in their minds. Anything but the Free Staters. But for anyone but a Free Stater. That's totally it. Uh, Bedford, and then they list four candidates, two for town council and two for school board, that this these people are kind of endorsing. Yes. Uh, this is an important election for Bedford, and regardless of your opinions on the budgets and bond articles, it is crucial to see that good-minded and well-intentioned candidates are elected to serve Bedford. You know what's so ironic about this is that they're accusing the Free Staters of having outside agendas mm-hmm. when it's like, just because you came from somewhere else doesn't mean that you're ge- like, how are you going to serve where you came from, from the local government in Bedford? There's no way for me to serve Auburn, Alabama <laughs> from here by running for local elections. It just wouldn't make sense. And the incumbents to a lot of local governments are usually there they've been sort of propped up because their dealings with you know some of their friends who are into the local government the corridors of you know some of the more successful businesses and the people in government they're more likely to make trade-offs between uh, keeping power local and giving it to the state or to the federal government um a free stater is more likely to want to keep, you know, they may be opposed to the power in the first place, but mm-hmm. they definitely don't want to give it off to some bigger government. So they're more likely to protect local interests, anti-government folk. You would think. Um, I think that the, these gentlemen are fine folks, and the idea that they're not good-minded or well-intentioned is really, uh, really, in, uh, really insulting on the part of this this particular hit piece. Well, I personally don't know anything about these candidates' platforms. But I don't know anything about politics in Bedford anyway. Well, it's the same as it is in any town. I mean, the the people who want to control others get into positions of power, and they use those positions uh, to reward their friends and punish their enemies. And they see that those positions are being threatened now by the newbies in town, and they're lashing out to put a stop to this. This is essentially the good, the good old boy network, right? I mean, these politicians here, they say they represent 93 years of serving the town of Bedford as town councilors, school board members, and chief of police. So these are the old guard. These mm-hmm. are the people who've been in the system forever, and they want to stay. They want things to stay the way they are, and 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 how dare these Free State Project participants come in here with their ideas about freedom and introduce them? But at least they're actually encouraging people to do research. I mean, I I fully support that. Please research the Free State Project. That is a good point. Everyone in Bedford, New Hampshire, in fact, all of New Hampshire, should research the Free State Project and learn about what it is that the people who are coming here believe in. Because I bet you half of these people that are in public office in Bedford weren't New Hampshire natives either. They, they may true. have been there longer, but I bet a bunch of them have come from places like New Jersey. And they work in Manchester. Yeah, more coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government over 
overextends itself and spends beyond its means. Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll-free, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have on our website. Archives included, they go back for years. You click, you download, they're yours for free. Just go to freetalklive.com to get them. And at coffee.freetalklive.com, you can hook yourself up with a free pound of the best of the best coffee as a drink by Allie Havens. Mm, coffee. Buzzbox Coffee. It's shade grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. Coffee is an absorbent crop, which means the organic certification is that much more important. This is great product, and the price is pretty decent. It's competitive with other high end coffees. But the big difference with Buzzbox is they're actually helping people around the world make better lives for themselves by buying into their coffee co-op. They're making uh, micro-loans through World Vision. We're looking for a 1,000 Free Talk Live listeners who love coffee to order coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, you get a pound for free. You just have to cover the cost of shipping, and uh, you can cancel your subscription at any time. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com and help us change lives through these micro-loans and offering people in poverty an opportunity to change their own lives. Uh, it's, an, it's an amazing company and they're doing great work. Go and and check. they bring it right to your door. That's Is that right. correct? Yeah, you get it's delivery. the best part. Yeah, delivery of your favorite coffee right to the, uh, your front door and you're helping make people uh, have a better life through the microloans. Coffee.freetalklive.com. They actually share some of the stories about some of these microloans and it's not all about the coffee co-op. I think they're also helping people with other businesses in these third world countries. That's a cool thing about the market with something as selfish as buying yourself coffee. You can be changing the lives of others in the third world coffee.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Dave. He's in New York. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Allie. Hi, Ian. Hi, Allie. How you doing? Dave, what's on your mind? 
the other night when I called you after hours, you you and Daryl were pretty much rude to me when I was trying to answer, when I was trying to get through a simple question. Ian and Daryl being talk- rude. I, I don't I believe that. I was trying to talk to you about a site called, about a certain porn site. And you yeah, you gave out, well, Dave, hold on, before you go on, you gave out the sites on Saturday night, and you don't need to plug them over and over again if you are... Uh, if you are upset about these sites and what they were, what you were describing on Saturday night were a couple of sites that are like celebrity porn sites. You're complaining where, about porn sites? No, well, he's what he's saying was that they're degrading to women and he doesn't like them. But if you don't like them, Dave, you shouldn't give out their URLs on the air so people can give them traffic. Uh, and plus, one of them has a curse word in it, and I was kind of uncomfortable with you saying that on the air, so that's one of the reasons why you were cut short. But yes, you did call the studio after hours, and no one does that, by the way, Dave. You're the only person well, I do. And, who's, and you guys who's ever... Very, Dave, you hold on. You're the only person who's ever called after hours like that, and you called incessantly after hours. No one has an obligation to answer the phone after we're done off the air, but we went ahead and answered the phone because we knew it was you. Every time there's a call after hours, it's always you and so I, I you know, we saw the phone ringing and uh, and I said to Daryl, hey, do you want to talk to uh, to Dave? And he did. And he picked up with a voice of a cartoon character and kind of <laughs> we had a little bit of fun, Dave. It wasn't uh, it wasn't anything else. I acted as though I was you a voicemail. Be, you should be happy about this. What's that? You guys were you guys were childish. I want an apology. No, I'm not going to apologize. It was fun, Dave, an and it's okay to be childish sometimes. So I'm not going to apologize no, to you for it. No, In fact, you should th- you should thank us, Dave, because you actually recorded those calls and you put them on your YouTube channel, and now people have been spreading that video around. You've gotten hundreds of views wow. in less than 24 hours on this uh, video. So really, you should thank us for helping you create good hundreds, content. Hundreds of views. No, there isn't hundreds of views. All I want is a formal apology. I just for went and I looked on your YouTube you. channel, Dave. There are over 200 views right now of that one video. I want to hear the word. Dave. I'm sorry. You called the studio and they answered the phone. I don't see why you want an apology. It seems like they were being nice to take your call Dave, after Darryl, hours. Daryl and Ian were very rude to me, being all childish and babyish. I wanted to talk to them like an adult. They were very rude and considerate. What did you want to talk about? Childish. What, what, why did you I call went, after I hours? An apology. I called after hours because they hung up on because they, Ian had hung up on me the other night because because of these websites that I was in. On the show? Because I had a, like a course where. Well, yeah. yeah I, That's I, how I, radio works, Dave. Right, you Dave, don't get to stay on for a whole conversation like with your mom on the phone or something. Right. Look, Dave, when you call talk radio, you have a point, you make your point. Uh, sometimes we have a conversation about that point, and sometimes the conversations last longer than others. There have been times when you've called this show where you've been on for multiple segments in the past. But on the case of the Saturday night show, we had a lot of calls that were on hold waiting to talk on the air, and so therefore people tend to not get as long on the air on the Saturday night show. And you made your point more than once. You have a tendency to repeat yourself, Dave, and you have to understand that uh, we have right, an, we have, have a apology. show that we want to entertain our listeners, and if there's a call who's repeating himself constantly that's not very interesting to listen to so once you were repeating yourself the second time i decided that your call was done and i'm not going to apologize for it that's I just the way apology. that's the way this business is run I want an apology and you owe me an apology i have no obligation to answer your calls after hours dave you should be grateful that we yeah. gave you good content for your youtube channel I want you to yeah, say no, thank you, cool Dave. The, How about I this? Cool if you say cool. thank you, if you say thank you to me and Daryl for providing you entertaining content for your YouTube channel where, where you've gotten hundreds of views in less than 24 hours, I'll go ahead and apologize to you. How about that? I want an apology from you, from you and Daryl or, or whoever, from you yourself, saying I'm sorry for acting so childish to you. No, nah, it was fun. Hours. I'm not sorry for it. Thanks, Dave, for the call tonight. 855-450 free. What's wrong with acting childish from time to time? What's wrong with being in touch with your inner child and having a little bit of fun? <laughs> Do you think I'm wrong for that, Allie? Is no. it wrong for me not to apologize to Dave? I know, because you're not sorry. So I think it would be wrong for you to apologize. That's true. Should I be sorry? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I just think that with something like that, where someone is like doesn't quite know the um, the etiquette. I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to know what the etiquette is of a radio show anyway, because you know. Well, you could always ask, and I've you know I just explained to him how it works. That's true. But he doesn't care. He you doesn't know, seem to be he's the kind of person who takes a hint, which creeps me out. Honestly, I just don't like people that understand social cues mm-hmm. and that are persistent. That always just gives me a weird vibe. 
Well, apparently Dave also threatened to sue uh, Free Talk Live on the Free Talk Live BBS. Well, that's not nice. Recently, yeah. That's yeah. rude, He's Dave. He's upset because somebody posted his full name on the Free Talk Live BBS, which it's not a, it's not a, a hard thing to get Dave's last name. He posts on our Facebook page under his real name, or what I presume to be his real name. And so, you know, anybody who and wants in the, to. In the chat, he puts like his location too. Sure. He'll post his phone number sometimes. So, what? like, I've seen him post his phone number on his Facebook page. I think so, he's just being a hater. It's obvious. Well, yeah, in fact, that's what we should talk about here a little bit further as we barely scratch the surface of a story called I Love Haters over at LouRockwell.com. And one of Dave's issues that he's called with in the past is that he gets into arguments with people online. He has haters, too. That he has haters. Well, I think that people should be, they should embrace their haters because, for one thing, you know, you can go a long time uh without having anyone who cares enough about you to, to say, anything. say anything negative about you. And that's, you know, that's that's all right. But then you have to always wonder, you know, people are self-conscious, I think, just um, intuitively they start to question what do people say when I'm not around. And I know that uh, I think it's probably natural to have those questions, but unless you have someone who feels that you are high enough up there that they can openly criticize you without feeling bad about it, then that means you've kind of made it. We'll come back with uh, the 10 things you can, or 10 things about haters that you need to know. I don't know if it's like a list. It's it's called the ultimate cheat sheet for dealing with haters. That's the name of the story. We'll share that with you here in moments. Free Talk Live. Does advertising on the Genesis Communications radio network actually bring positive results? Let's ask Thomas Baldrick from Free Strike Guy. Thomas, talk about customer service at GCN. GCN is extraordinary in how they take care of their customers. The bottom line, Free Strike Guy keeps advertising on GCN because it works. If you'd like to experience unbelievable customer service, call Lee Wickenhauser at 877-996-4327, extension 107. Please pay attention, folks. AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com is a Christian, veteran-owned wholesale preparedness company. Our mission is to get the Word of God out to all those in need of a Bible and who cannot afford one. We also provide great-tasting freeze-dried food from only 50 cents per serving, GMO-free food, over 1,000 preparedness items. Plus, for a limited time, type in the word Genesis at checkout and receive 10% off your total purchase. That's AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. 
walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa. Hey, 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 who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this costume. No, I have work today. This is, you ain't gonna make, wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control, toll free here, 855-453, that's the toll free number brought to you by Pro XPN. Tonight with you in the studio, it's Ian. And Allie. Allie has her website over at alpshow.com, she does her own radio show and you can check that out there for free, that's alpshow.com. And don't forget Free Talk Live, if you've got a mobile smartphone, you can go to m.freetalklive.com for our quick access to our live streams and the podcast, just go to m dot free talk live dot com and uh, like the rest of the features on our website the mobile site is also completely free now if you value your online privacy you really need to consider pro xpn in fact you can go right now and get the free account with pro xpn by going to pro dot com slash ftl but what is ProXPN and how does it help you with your privacy? Well, it's a virtual private network and it's global that actually encrypts your online data, meaning that before your information coming from your computer gets to your internet service provider, your ISP, it's encrypted, meaning your ISP will no longer know which websites you're visiting or what you're doing online or what you're searching for. Right now, they may be so, uh, keeping logs of all of those things for as long as five months or excuse me, five years, mm. as short as six months, as long as five years in some cases. So that makes it easy for the police or anybody else with a court order to get access to your information. It means that the companies could be mining that information and using that to sell advertisements to you. Regardless of what they're doing with it, they're holding on to it, and it could be used against you. So why not protect yourself by going to proxpn.com slash FTL and grab the ProXPN app. There's one for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and you can also uh, hook it up for Linux. There's a kind of a different setup for Linux, but it works, and it's pretty easy to do. But ProXPN keeps you private in more than just that way. It also protects your location. When you connect to the ProXPN server, the websites you're visiting will think you're at the location of the server, wherever that is. There's different ones worldwide. So if you want to make it look like you're in Singapore, you can do that with ProXPN or the Netherlands or you know different parts in the U.S. I think there's one in Prague now. And so there's different locations. So your connection location is protected when you're using ProXPN. Plus, with their premium account, there's no limits on bandwidth. So the free account has some limits on it premium account it's unlimited bandwidth and you've got the multiple servers from which you can choose plus you can privately torrent with their premium account use our discount code which is ftl20 to get 20 percent off the price of said premium account when you go to proxpn.com slash ftl again that code is ftl20 and there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee with proxpn they by the way do not keep records of your online surfing and searching habits at all proxpn.com slash ftl let's go to the phones and the fun and then we'll get to the uh, things that you need to know about haters robert is in vermont you're on free talk live hello robert hey guys how are you tonight hey, hey robert go ahead sir hey uh uh before i get into get into talking about uh about what i why i called i wanted to i want to say that uh you know i've been talking with you ian and, and daryl for probably close to three years and you guys are just wonderful wonderful people to talk with I know, the idea that they're rude is just crazy. You know, I may also call too much, and I'm and I'm going to look into that and probably just lay off a little bit. But, but uh, I want to say that these guys are absolutely wonderful people to talk with. I've been in Ian's house. I mean, he's invited me in. He's a great person. So I, I don't know why. And guy, uh, Dave, thinks that, that uh, Ian's a... Or, or Daryl and I, I just uh, I rude people. They're not. They're very, you know, very uh, uh, decent people. 
Right. Well, well you know, if, if anything's rude, it's calling a phone number over and over again, uh, you know, that uh, you're not technically sh- you shouldn't really be calling after a certain time. Not talking about you. I'm talking about Dave. He called multiple times last night after the show was over. And we had a little bit of fun with him, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of fun. We were playing kind of a reverse prank on Dave, but he was asking for it by calling a talk radio yeah. studio after hours, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse to death. That's yeah, okay. We do that all the time here. Go ahead. But, uh, hey, I wanted to say that I used to, uh, was a smoker for a lot of years, probably close to 30 years. And what worked for me was just to stop cold turkey. Mm. That's what a lot of people do. Uh, was it really hard for you? Uh, it, it, well, I mean, it was difficult. I mean, I went to go price out with all the gums and the, and all the patches and everything. And I, what I found was that it was more expensive to try and quit hmm. using that method than it was to buy the cigarettes. And so what I did was is I reinforced it by, well, it didn't cost me anything to start smoking, so it shouldn't cost me anything to stop. Right. And I waited long enough before I told people that when I said I quit smoking, I meant it. And yeah. it worked in almost two years. You know, Congratulations. I think, I think that that's interesting because people have different approaches about like when to tell people about your mission to quit smoking. Because some people like to let people know as soon as they've decided that they're going to quit. Some people let you know like before they've even started quitting they're just like hey a week from now or like this is my last cigarette or this is my last pack yeah and then four days later they're smoking again and then but like i kind of like that idea of going for a while without having had a cigarette so you can be more bragging about it that way you can say aha well i haven't had a cigarette for a week or a month or a year that would be awesome robert thank you for the call tonight appreciate you sharing your thoughts and experience 855 450 freeze the toll-free number so i'm going to jump right into this list here from lewrockwell.com james altucher the author. His website actually is the Altucher Confidential, jamesaltucher.com. I'm going to jump past his intro and right into his 10 uh, 10 cheat sheet tips for dealing with haters. Number one, it's about them. It's a bit of a cliche, but it's true. Behind every anger is a fear. Whoever hates is also afraid of something. That doesn't mean you say, poor baby, he's just afraid, but it's just worth noting. For instance, uh, a reviewer of one of his books said the poor miserable audience maybe his or her fear is of being poor and miserable and so he she hears someone saying that to her no matter who is talking this is her problem in life right now often people say oh don't worry they're just jealous that is the haters Mm -hmm. maybe they are maybe they aren't we can never read their minds it's none of my business why someone thinks something of me but something is going on in their lives that is bringing up a fear and they indulge the fear by having an anger towards you Anger is just fear indulged. And we see that with the uh, hate that the people in Bedford are getting right now. We told you earlier this hour about two Free State Project participants who are being attacked in the media. They're being attacked uh, in hit piece propaganda. And clearly these people are afraid. The people that are attacking them are afraid of losing their power. Number two, it's also really about you. Most people who hate me, I never even think about. But some haters push buttons. Some accidentally know how to get under my skin. Or not accidentally. Like when a family member hates you and knows exactly what buttons to press. When someone pushes a button, I get angry and maybe even defensive. But it's not because they said something horrible. It's because under the fleshy armor of rage, I'm afraid they might be right. Mm. I might not even admit this to myself. They put the knife in, after all, so I can accuse them. But the reality is I might be twisting the knife in even further. So uh, he gives uh, this example of this hater who wrote something nasty about something he wrote. And he says, I pulled it out of a hun- from hundreds I could have used, not because it was particularly mean, but I just realized that I uh, then told you a story of what happened to me in seventh grade when a girl made fun of my voice. So maybe I really am afraid I have some weird sort of voice. I don't know. It's just worth noting to myself. When all you do is note something to yourself, it at least separates it out from the nonstop chatter in the head. It lets you identify with it and put it in its own special cage. Right. Like if someone says something that really gets to you and you're just like, you just want to blame that person for being a jerk or whatever you tell yourself. But then at the same time, you know, you're trying to suppress those feelings that they maybe they touched on. Then you're not really confronting whatever it is that's 
making you feel self-conscious about that one comment. He says it makes it easier to identify and deal with and maybe even learn something about yourself. Number three, the 24-hour rule. If someone attacks you in any way, you might get bad feelings. If it's a public attack, then others might get bad feelings. People will say, Jane said this about James, so he must be an idiot. Or it might be an office politics attack or an attack in a relationship. The 24-hour rule works in almost every case. If you never respond to the initial attack, it goes away in 24 hours. If you respond even once, then reset the clock. It's another 24 hours as it spreads through the spider web of human interaction. Interesting. This is why some battles go on for years. No one stops responding. The attacks continue until one person dies. And as the <laughs> Onion states, world mortality rate holds steady at 100%. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. Self-reliance. Survival supplies. Survival skills. National experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo. A must-be-there event. Presented by American Living. This massive expo will include special guests. David Mays from Nat Geo's Doom Doomsday Preppers. Plus, GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Hear Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Pepper Network, along with many other leading national experts. Learn life-saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com That's NPSExpo.com If you're David, a few well-chosen words can help level the playing field with Goliath. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com. Recently, I saw a Yellow Pages ad for an appliance repair company, and the headline read, Why Wait for Sears? If you're going to the Yellow Pages, the Dead Sea Scrolls of Advertising, you're ready to buy right now. So this is an attention-grabbing message. And how about the plumber whose radio ad says, Call by noon Thursday, and we'll be there Saturday at no extra cost. Smart guy. Most plumbing firms give their crew the weekend off. This one gives them Sunday and Monday off. In the words of a respected advertising executive, cut to the chase, make it quick, and tell me exactly what you can do for me, especially if you're looking for work. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. When I signed up for the Free State Project, I was excited by the prospect of moving somewhere with other people that had liberty as a goal. When I got here to New Hampshire, I was stunned by the great weather and the natural beauty. The Free State Project is helping to move liberty forward. Want to be involved? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. That's freestateproject.org. 
You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're talking about haters. If you want to share your thoughts, you're welcome to join us at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I posted, by the way, on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter, the link to the video that Dave created, Dave in New York, who called in earlier. Oh, yes. The video that he made out of his calls that he made to Free Talk Live. The private after show party. After the show last night where we had a little bit of fun with him. And so if you wanted to hear how that went, because he's all insulted, he's acting like he's insulted by us having a little bit of fun. Uh, if you want to actually hear what transpired, he he did us the favor of recording all of it and putting it online on his YouTube channel. So I've linked to that. You can check that out. Now, I'm not saying Dave's a hater. I don't think he's a hater. That was just our topic this hour, and he yes. happened to call in. Um, but we are talking about haters and some important rules for dealing with haters, according to James Altucher, uh, over at jamesaltucher.com, I believe it is, the Altucher Confidential. We're on rule number four, which is the 30-30-30 rule. And he says, I had a few posts where I stole the same image of a woman doing yoga poses on a beach. I got some criticism for always using images of a sexy woman. I also got criticism for taking the images and not giving credit. Then the woman in the images actually wrote to me. I told her I was getting this criticism. She told me her whole beautiful story, which I included in my last book. But one, sh- one thing she said was that for every creative thing you do, one third will love you, one third will hate you, and one third won't care. Which <laughs> means that you should do what you love. You should do the best you can. You should try to do the things that will help you improve every day. And when bad comments come, just put them in that one third bucket where they belong. Okay, nice. I think that's excellent advice. It's so true. And and if you translate that into what we've seen happen here in New Hampshire with the liberty activists, there's a lot of hate that has been thrown around about some of the things that have happened here in the Keene area. Yes. Even some people within the liberty movement hate what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a recent video that was posted by the folks making the uh, 101 Reasons. Have you heard about this movie, Allie? Yes. So they're making a documentary. It's going to be a feature-length film about the 101 reasons that Freedom lives in New Hampshire. It's a very exciting project, and I was so excited by it, I signed on as an assistant producer for the film, which meant that I gave them money. And in return, they gave me a 30-second ad after this promo video that they just released. So they released a five-minute promo video about uh, Porkfest, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. And at the very end, there's a 30-second ad for Freekeen.com. Well, somebody posts on the comment section about how terrible the, that the, the the video was great until that free keen BS at the end. Ugh. And if they would only chop off the free keen ad, then that person would share that video with all their friends. That's and just so, so silly. So it just doesn't, you know, there's nothing you can do to please everybody. Whereas on the other hand, lots of the comments were very positive. Anything you do in life, if it's visible... You know, anything you do privately, most people aren't going to know about. But if you do something publicly, whether it's put yourself out there on a radio show like you do every week, Ali, on ALP, or it's running for political office or taking some sort of position on an issue, people are going to hate you for it. It doesn't matter what you do. I think a perfect example of this is our is kind of the the progression of hatred that we've experienced here in Keene. The the guys in Bedford running for political office are getting it now. Yes. But they're just, it's just now just the onset. Right. They're, they're just now starting with it. Here in Keene, we've experienced it for years because we've been doing really noticeable activism over a long period of time. And what they always said originally was, well, The critics usually say something like, well, I like a lot of what you stand for, but I don't like the way you're going about it. And then if you ask them the question of, well, what do you mean by that? There's always a different answer. They don't know. Well, so if they they can answer it, it's usually a different answer for each person. So something has offended them at some point, whether it's topless Tuesdays or which hasn't happened in years but it happened once you know some people got topless in the park Uh, there was uh, smoking marijuana in the park that was offensive to some people there was uh, Derek J and I interacting with a park uh, not a parking force interacting with the uh the crossing guard. Crossing guard. That was and now offensive. it's Robin Hooding. People are offended by that, which right. I just thought that that was the one activism that no one was going to um, it was criticize. But that was just 
Right. You know, right. Robin Hooding you know I mean? seems like perfect activism. It's unassailable, but yeah. still people are assailing it. Um, so, yeah, it's something. It's always something, and it's always different. So there's no way to make everybody happy. The only way to make them happy would be to do nothing at all. But some would say, even in the liberty movement, oh, you guys are offensive because you're doing all these uh, civil disobedience things, and that's what's offensive to people. Why don't you try doing inside the system activism? Well, well even out, that's going to turn out to be very really controversial, too. Turns out it is. In fact, we had a dozen liberty activists activists show up at the school board meeting this year to do political action and what happens the people who are inside the system act you know the people who are active inside the system the the statist people the people who love the government they complain that we were there so it used to be hey guys get involved in the system now when we get involved in the system it's hey get the hell out of here we don't want you we don't right. want you involved in the system <laughs> we don't want you here trying to change things how dare you so there's no way to make you these just got to do what feels right for you yeah. and if you try to listen too much to people that just hate what you stand for or just don't like you for whatever reason then you're going to end up you know going on a path that isn't your path. So let's go on with the, uh, th- the article here from James Altucher about haters, dealing with haters. R- rule number five, delete. I'm always happy when someone disagrees with me. I don't mind that. But often people are incapable of expressing disagreement and it comes out in a way that is obnoxious or hateful. When I can, I delete them. I can put delete in quotes. Sometimes it's not a blog commenter, but someone in real life. I delete them also. I don't speak to people who are bad for me. What if it's a boss or some someone you have to speak to, however? Well, I don't engage with them. I let them do their thing. I nod hello in the hallways. I don't kiss anyone's butt to get them to like me, not even my daughters. Everyone gets their time in the timeout box, and eventually they can come out again if they behave. What if it's someone screaming at you on the phone? Just do this. I have to go. That's worked against me, particularly when I was younger and wanted to scream more. Why are you doing this to me? And it felt very painful, but it made me behave better next time. I have to say, I don't necessarily agree completely with this. Um, I don't agree necessarily with deleting hateful comments like on YouTube or my yeah. blog. Uh, there there has been one or two people in particular who have been banned from the Freaking YouTube channel just because they were so prolific with dominating the comments with mm-hmm. their, their hateful comments. But most of the time, I don't even read the comments but if I do see the hate, I won't delete them because I, I don't care. I don't right. care enough to care to delete them because I don't want to give them that level of attention, number one. Well, and you don't want to get into a war with a commenter where if you find somebody who's such a, a dedicated hater that they will create new comments and new profiles simply to continue yeah. wasting your time having to delete them. Yeah, it's true. There are crazy people out there like that. But I recently had a Facebook interaction where I just posted something, an opinion of mine. Someone who disagreed with me kept posting and they weren't even talking to me at this point. They were just like, this is my opinion. And I just found it really obnoxious and yeah, I guess a little hateful, um, but I just didn't like it. So I didn't, he kept posting. So eventually I was just like, I'm just going to delete all of these comments, like every single one. Was that on your personal profile? Yeah. I think that's a little bit more understandable. Like, for instance, on a public profile like a uh, YouTube or a blog comment, I don't mind the haters being seen. Mm-hmm. It's it's okay. It doesn't bother me at all. But yeah, if you're going, if you want to clean up your own personal profile, I think that makes sense. Number six, hate is contagious. Someone tweeted a while ago: James Altucher equals pound human garbage. I don't know why he tweeted it. I didn't know who he was, but I got angry for a second. I didn't follow any of my above commandments. I looked him up. He works at AOL. I tried to figure out how to get him fired. He made his (laughs) one tweet, but then it gave me maybe a thousand thoughts. The worst thing you can do to your body is stab it. Anger is an emotional stab at your emotional body. Some religions say you should show compassion to your enemies. I don't know. This is really hard to do. The best I can do is recognize that I don't know this person and that every additional thought is another way for me to stab myself. Then the infection spreads inside of me, consumes me. I don't like to stab myself. Number seven, you'll never know. I could have contacted this guy and said, I just need to know. Why do you think I'm human garbage? But this is one of those deathbed moments. People have said, I'm really glad I found out why that random stranger called me human garbage on their deathbed exactly zero times (laughs) in the history of the universe. There's no need to know. And even if you do finally know, it'll always turn out that there was no good reason. Number eight, resistance is futile. 
let's say someone does actually have a reason for hating you and it's easy to refute like they hate you because you're from rhode island but you're actually from canada you can say but i'm from canada and they'll say "Ugh, that's even worse nobody ever changes their mind it's true change is hard quitting cigarettes is very hard almost impossible for many people hating is even more addictive so imagine how hard it is to change someone's mind facts don't matter defending yourself makes it worse see the 24-hour rule even a history of friendship doesn't matter. You can say, we've been friends for 20 years. Are you really going to let this get in the way of that? And the answer is yes, because they can't help themselves. Because it's about some fear that they have. Because it's about some fear that you have, and never the twain shall meet. I've had experience with this. There's the haters group on uh, Facebook. Stop free keen. Yes. And I remember being in their group previously and you know arguing with them endlessly about their it's stuff. It's pointless. And, and it really is pointless. Uh, so... Whatever. There's nothing you can say to change yeah. their mind. They're just going to hate. And it eventually always feels gonna... like you can, but you realize shortly after that it's just going to bring on, it's just going to encourage them. Eventually, they may leave. A lot of the haters in New Hampshire have decided to move out. See and I'm ya. hoping to see more of that in the future. More coming up tomorrow night. See you then. FreeTalkLive.com. Free Talk Live. Yeah, you know, this would work if there was no government and everything worked the right Communism way. requires central control. There's evidence that the free market works. The marketplace is what has created all of the wondrous things that we have and take for granted in this world. The marketplace is what brings us air conditioning, grocery stores, the internet, all the things that you enjoy, your cell phone, all the things you take for granted. That's not as a result of government. Government slows down and impedes the market. Government restricts freedom and it restricts the marketplace. So, you know, there's evidence that the freer a market is. Look at the computer industry, for instance. The more free and the less regulated a market is, the better the innovation, the better the competition, the better the prices, and the better the quality of the products and the services. I mean, we've got evidence to prove that our economic model is and, sound. And look at all the wealthy people that the computer industry has created. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, March 10th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,338. Silver opened at $20.94, and Bitcoin is trading at $627.41. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush. Online at SovereignBTC.com. Support also comes from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. For your residential mortgage needs, call Dorothy, 512-343-6494 or apply online at calldorothy.com, NMLS 216624. Liberty Beat support also comes from My Magic Mud, available at Brave New Books, or online at mymagicmud.com. In the news, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, commonly known as FISA, has rejected a government petition. Russia Today reports a request was made to allow the government to retain phone records for longer than the five years currently allowed. A group representing around 200 Nova Scotian farmers is opposing the introduction of genetically engineered apples from British Columbia, Canada. The Nova Scotia Fruit Growers Association is speaking out against a Summerland, B.C. apple growers application 
for approval of a genetically engineered apple that doesn't turn brown once sliced. Businessman Neil Carter believes his company's product will be valuable for the pre-sliced fruit market, but Robert Peel, president of the Growers Association, worries that customers' fears of genetically modified organisms may hurt business. On Sunday afternoon, thousands of activists walked across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Alabama, marking the anniversary of the violent Bloody Sunday marches of 1965. On March 7th of 1965, 600 protesters marched against the exclusionary voting process. The police gassed, beat, and ran over them with horses. Two days later, police prevented 2,500 citizens from marching across the bridge. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, now offering pro-pure water filtration, the only gravity-driven, all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. Support also comes from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online, massappealinc.com. And from growyourowngroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, March 10th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A group of Kentucky legislators is working to pass a bill they say would protect the privacy of citizens against drones. The Courier-Journal reports a bill has been filed to prohibit law enforcement agencies from gathering evidence with a drone without a warrant. It would not prohibit law enforcement from using drones to search for missing persons. It would also not affect the right of private companies to use drones so long as they don't carry lethal weapons. The bill is awaiting a hearing. It's supported by the ACLU. Over the weekend, Lebanon saw thousands of protesters take to the streets of Beirut in support of a law that would outlaw domestic violence. The renewed calls for the law came after the deaths of two women. Both are believed to have died as a result of domestic violence. The demonstrations also marked International Women's Day. Organizers of the march say every month one Lebanese woman is killed by domestic violence. Hackers have gained access to the personal blog and Reddit account of former Mt. Gox CEO, Mark Karbalis. Forbes reports both platforms were used to post a message claiming he retains access to some of the bitcoins he claims had been stolen. In an attempt to support the claim, the hackers uploaded a series of files that included a spreadsheet of more than a million trades, the former CEO's home address, and a screenshot intended to confirm the hacker's access to the data. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound. CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them 512-459-5253. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, March 10th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty 